Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Callie McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the Tabaxi Gloomstalker Ranger. And Joel Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. You'll also find prior episodes from the campaign available for your viewing pleasure there in one big playlist, all there on YouTube at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. And you can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch, which you're here right now to watch. Uh, <laughs> check us out at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube, which go up on Friday. This week's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim has been sponsored by our very good friends at Nerdarchy. First of all, if you haven't checked out their work on YouTube, head on over there. Uh, they're really fantastic members of the community with some great video content, advice for dungeon masters and players. Lots of great discussion on our favorite role-playing games. They've been doing this for even longer than we have. So I really love their channel. But what's really awesome is they have just launched their very first Kickstarter called Out of the Box Encounters for the fifth edition of the world's greatest role-playing game. It is a book consisting of awesome, unique, and easy-to-use encounters for 5e uh, that you can actually adapt to any other RPG, even if you're not playing fifth edition. And what is absolutely stellar is that they are 400% funded now. Wow. Uh, they are totally blowing through their stretch goals, and this book has ballooned from being 30 encounters to now 55 Woo. encounters and they're going to get D, D beyond integration fantasy ground integration uh and all sorts of add-ons with um arc knight and different contributors so that you can even get like miniatures and maps and stuff to go in with the kickstarter it's a really amazing Woo. offering and really, really worth checking out. I'm looking forward to it coming out because I'm sure there's something in it that I'm going to steal. <laughs> so <laughs> check them out uh, on Nerdarchy, now live on Kickstarter with Out of the Box Encounters. With that, let's return to the ruins. <laughs> Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalk the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Welcome back to the ruins of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had finally reclaimed the upper levels of the great Cathedral of St. Vitruvio, vanquishing the remaining leaders of the gnolls, including a mutated gnoll priestess known as Gregora. Gregora. And the last remaining gnolls who seemed to be fighting for control over who would be the new leader of the pack. Answer Having claimed the upper reaches of the Grand Cathedral of St. Petruvio, our heroes have found that the treasures that they seek, documents, the bones of Petruvio himself, or even the bones of Argonath, the ancient dragon, which can be used to reignite the great brazier that is at the heart of the Grand Cathedral lie in the catacombs beneath the Grand Cathedral, which have now become a haunted ruin with the spirits of the fallen worshippers of the sacred fire having stirred now that the light has gone out in the Grand Cathedral. You stand in the altar chamber 
beneath the great dome of the Drakenheim Cathedral. This is a massive room. The ceiling which is hundreds of feet in the air in this vaulted and many sectioned dome of stained glass and pure glass windows. And there are all manner in the ceiling of reflectors embedded in the dome itself that even though there's not a lot of light coming in from inside, the effect of all the reflectors in the dome underneath causes this brilliant sunlight to illuminate in rays that spread out through the chamber and leave the hall lit. Even though the outer outside it is an overcast and cloudy day, in this hall is brilliant light. Several of the windows up there are a little bit muggy, and so not a purest light is shining in as once it used to. But even as you look at the two um, great doors that you've opened up that lead down to the catacombs, the sunlight, the rays of sunlight, illuminate straight down these pathways as well. Surrounding you, of course, the center in the room is a great circular um, dais, uh, some 40 feet in diameter with sets of stairs leading up to this massive brazier filigreed of bronze, gold, and silver. And in the midst of it is this massive pyre that contains burned remains of charcoal, a flame that has gone out for at least 15 years. This high altar is the representation of the sacred fire. Um, and, e and the worshippers of the sacred fire even claim that while this flame is lit, a protective blessing emanates through the whole region. Every church of the sacred fire has a flame like this. And all of them, th there are many other smaller churches and chapels throughout Drakenheim, and pretty much all of them have gone dark, except for the ones in Emberwood Village. But you can imagine how uh, on a sunny day with the flame alit in here, this chamber would be truly brilliant for everything about its architecture, the way that the, the chambers have been built, have all been designed to reflect and intensify the light in this chamber. And then up above, the, there are engravings that tell the story of the myth of the sacred fire. There are several other large um, sarcophagi as well in the shrines that go out around the main altar. Um, several of these have been opened ostensibly from the inside and there are skeletal remains of several robed worshippers and paladins splayed out across the floor here as well. Kind of makes me feel uncomfortable that they're kind of laying on the ground like that. Um, I think they were the alarm system. Yeah, but what if something sets off the alarm system? I think something already set off the alarm system. That's why we don't want to go. I mean, we have to go in the basement. Mm. I don't really want to go in the basement, but we have to. I have a question. Would it be sacrilegious to try to disguise ourselves as bone people and and maybe like pretend to be undead? Like, do you speak undead? Well, I don't know if undead have a language, do they? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I speak. I speak. Uh, you seem pretty fluent. Sticks. Yeah. I took it as an elective. <laughs> I uh, I speak under common. Maybe that will yeah. sound undeadish. Yeah, and and yeah, yeah. Veo, you talk to sticks all the time. I do. I speak under common as well, but I don't know if that's what he speaks. So uh, what I'm saying is, grunts. we grab a bunch of bones, and we make ourselves look like like we've done this before. This is just this is a uh, this is Dragon Force 101. I'm wondering um, infiltration. As my favorite enemy, um, do I remember if undead use dark vision to see? Um, give me a, because this pertains to your favorite enemy, give me a religion check with advantage. Religion. 14. Okay. Many undead creatures are considered by the sacred fire to be blasphemous in nature, but it is not unknown for the holy places of the sacred fire to be guarded by deathless guardians. 
amongst the sacred fire, you recall that for, for the most part, most people who worship the sacred fire are cremated. But the bodies of the clergy, and particularly the bodies of flame keepers and paladins, are considered sacred. And so they are mummified and entombed rather than cremated. Because amongst the sacred fire, it is believed that their deathless bodies, that their spirits, though they join the flame, in a time of great need, their spirits can rejoin their bodies and animate them. These are undead creatures, but they are very different from the mindless horrors mm. that are animated by necromancers. So these are going to be really smart undead <laughs> people. They're not quite the same as when a necromancer takes them up, but... Um, you know, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> the one thing that you can always rely on with undead is that they're usually pretty stupid. But if we have smart undead... Or at least strong ones. <laughs> I don't know if they'll be smart, but strong for sure. Well, then I'm we'll just have to be extra careful we disguising ourselves as skeletons. <laughs> I was going to say, we have a really strong person. I don't know if my dis disguised self will uh, turn me into a skeleton. I guess we and both As for your question, do they rely on dark vision or, or not? It would depend on the specific manifestation, mm. uh, but they likely do have some form of dark vision. Okay. Hmm. Maybe, um, maybe the flame keeper can help us plural like yeah. maybe there's like a I don't know a holy water or some like magical club that we can use to bash their heads in I mean I'll, I, I, I'll I, ask I, then I'll yeah, be the one yeah. ask. a regular club <laughs> they, could probably bash several, their heads in um, the <laughs> I want a holy club at this time the, the lord commander has returned to the barracks but the knight captain several other hooded lanterns and Ophelia Reed are here. Um, they are assembling in the square. They're, they're, you can see that they're making a rough kind of palisade around the entrance to the cathedral to defend it. And so, if you do want to go talk to them before going fur further, you certainly could. Is this uh, is this a dead end, or do you think? Uh, heh, yeah. They're dead. I could ask them if there's any knowledge uh, they have about these specific undead since they are part of their belief. Well, you guys are doing that. I'm going to investigate this orb of delirium that I have and see if I can figure it out. You're not touching that with your bare hands, are you? Oh, this one's safe. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. This is the one that River gave you? Yes. Yeah. I thought you meant the one that we picked out of the eye sockets. I was like, please don't touch that no, with your bare hands. No, it's my pearl of power. I'm basically <laughs> oh, okay. saying that I'm going to regain a spell slot while you guys are doing that. Oh, fancy. fancy. Is that allowed? Yeah. Ophelia Reed is in the um, is in the aisles of the cathedral uh, where they are gathering the remains of the fallen, and she is sprinkling some ash and dust on what remains of them. Um, and she she turns to you as, as you approach and says, are, are you ready? Are you s getting started? Yeah, but Pluto had a question about... Yeah, Pluto, I'll let you ask. Um, <laughs> I was wondering if you had any sort of undead kind of like murder weapons. Um, for example, and I'm going to look around. Is there like a big cross that I could use as like a... As like, like a, a club symbol or, or something like that. Okay, <laughs> like a club, like a big, like one off. Like There's an definitely altar. bits, bits of furniture and uh, two by fours and stuff from the tables that the gnolls brought in that you could break off. So I'm gonna break that off, and I'm like, can you bless this? And so I can use it to smite our enemies that used to be friends. Ophelia Reed speaks up, and she says, she she smiles strangely. And she says, now. If there are spirits of our followers down there, as I said, they're going to be mad. I w we don't... What would have become of them if they have stirred from their resting places? They are deathless. They are beyond death. And that is the fate that awaits all of us in the harbor of the sacred fire. But... 
And so you can't think of them if the paladins and the other priests have stirred. They're not going to be like regular undead, and the blessings that we would use to fight against creatures of darkness do not work against them. Cool, cool, cool. (laughs) And the power of the flame is such that if they are... If there is anything left to their corporeal bodies, they may rise again, even if you destroy... Even if you batter them down. But... She turns saying a prayer to them their remains and sprinkling some holy water or silver dust over their remains can calm them and prevent them from getting back up again it's a good thing that I assume Pluto knows some holy text or scripture it may be now for that reason most of our catacombs do have a font of holy water. So if you can find that, you may be able to take some samples of it. You'll also find silver dust down there, almost certainly. Typically, we keep a few other things. Now, just beware. There are... Many of us also collect some of what we call waters of the flame these are holy waters but you'll know them because they smell very pungent don't use these (laughs) they're very flammable so be careful with those (laughs) Sebastian turns around from across the room did somebody say flammable (laughs) I I come running over do, do these undead burn? And exhausted, too? Like, you're panting? <laughs> yeah, I just absorbed some energy out of this orb. It was weird. I feel good. Um, it would be best if you do not... If you do as little as possible to destroy their bodies. They are sacred things. Oh. And they will need those bodies in the times of darkness. I will be careful. <laughs> That's why we're going to just push them around. We just push them and then keep running. Pluto, I don't push. I blow things up. I know. She's right here. Just, just... I'm whispering. Oh, okay. So <laughs> if I use the holy water on my weapons, will that be more effective with calming them? You have some calming arrows, Unfortunately, no. No? Oh, I have to actually spray them with it. Okay. I sprinkle some holy water on a fireball. That... <laughs> As I said, it will not harm them but if you manage to subdue them or if you do because their bodies will be sustained by their connection to the flame Mm. if you cut them down Mm. they will get back up Mm -hmm. probably in only a few minutes Mm. we're gonna go quick but if you do calm them using some holy water and some prayers they may not it may hold them back for a little bit longer and give you the time that you need to get to Vitruvio or Argonath. Once you bring those bones back to me, we can start. Now, of course, you could, if you wanted to, bring us the remains of other paladins and priests down there, and I could use those as well as part of the ritual of the Sacred Fire. But I'm going to need something very important like Vitruvio's bones or Argoneth to properly consecrate this flame. Do you think that Vitruvio or Argoneth would also come back with the others? Vitruvio and Argoneth were great martyrs for the cause of the flame. And I would hope that they would hold on to a stronger shred of their mind. Mm. For many... Joining the flame is the end of their memory of their mortal life. Their purpose, our spirits when we join the flame are filled with the new purpose that we will have in 
the battles to come. Mm. But for great people like Argonath and Vitruvio, it may very well be that they have held on to more of their minds, which may mean that any of the madness that afflicts the other spirits has not gripped them so. Hmm. Well, hopefully hopefully we can only uh, hope. Hopefully they're polite when we ask them for some... Bones. Bones. So if we come up here with one of those two, like any bone will do. Bone or bones? I mean, Do we need like their whole bodily skeleton. structure? I mean, or can set? I like yeah. steal a rib? From what I understand, only the thigh bone of a trivia remains. Oh. Oh, so if he's up and walking around, it's going to be a thigh bone, just like okay, <laughs> rolling around. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, we can handle. That. I can handle a few possibly thigh bones. also his jaw or some of his finger bones, but there's not much to him left. So gather any of his bones, and will it help out if we can gather some other paladin bones as well? Like, does that make it easier? Or just Vitruvio. Vitruvio or Agona would be the most important. Okay. okay. Cool, cool, cool. We got this. Yeah, we're fine. We got this. Yeah. I'm not worried. They call us the bone collectors. Is it? I'm Ken Ken Chi. I I kinda like can you call us can you call us that? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> like out loud? <laughs> if that's your wish. All right. Do it. Go forth, bone collectors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. We did. Right, bone collectors. It's like grave robbers. I don't envy Ooh. the task ahead of you. No. It could wear on your spirit. I hope that the truth of the light guides your way. It's okay. I apparently don't have a soul anymore. So anyway. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be fine. You're mostly shadow. I'm not too mostly. worried about it. You're more I shadow. I mean light. Why would you think that you don't have a soul? Oh, uh, because a demon told them. Shut up. <laughs> Through the grapevine, I've heard that my soul is uh, has has somebody's name on it, other than my own. Like a demon that's been tricking us a bunch of times told him that he doesn't have a soul. Yeah, do you see that pile of meat over there <laughs> that we no, ripped down? No promise, no bargain. No deal or pact can hold a faithful soul away from the flame. Just remember that. Faithful soul. <laughs> Thank you. Your one chance of redemption and you mock it. <laughs> <laughs> my one, my one Your sh- one shot. <laughs> my one well, shot at redemption is yeah, to join the church. It's nah. the one shot we know about. It's his only... <laughs> There's another one where we bargain. I have survived this far without the sacred flame guiding me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it seems like they need my help more than I need theirs, so. Oh. I didn't say that out loud. That wasn't too... <laughs> that was while we were walking. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't to her face, guys. That's like we're walking away and I'm mumbling that to you, okay? All right, all right. All right. Let's, uh... Let's say that to her face. Let's, uh... Let's she, go? Yeah, as, you, as you turn, though, she says... S- Sebastian. I turn back. (laughs) A flame in the darkness. Those are the most important fires of all. You don't have to tell me twice. That's basically my M.O. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to ignite our own sacred flame down there. (laughs) I ignite sacred flames every day. (laughs) You're going to ignite a sacred flame down there, Pluto. What kind of flame are you igniting? (laughs) (laughs) I'm gassy. (laughs) Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. (laughs) Eat some of that Noel stuff. (laughs) Don't hold a match near... I ate an entire knoll. I was hungry. I mean, you were. You were a T-Rex. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm still I'm still recovering from that half knoll that, like, slowly is, like... It's like, I'm not used to eating that much knoll, if at all. If you're going to be like Perhaps. that, you get to be in the back, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I don't know. They, they basically said, don't go destroying undead. Well... Well, I don't think we're going to destroy any. It we, sounds like we're going to hit them. Okay. They're going to go down and wake up again. We got to just keep moving. Yeah, I don't have think... Have you seen me in combat? I don't... I don't do, like... 
keeping their bodies intact. Let's <laughs> do your best. Let's do you think they are going to go down and explore this while we're here? Let's be honest. No, so like if there's some exploded skeletons, we can just be like, we were there when we got here. Yeah, it was probably the meteor. When we were here. Um, The, the last thing that uh, Ophelia Reed will say before you go back down, are any of you wounded? Yes. Uh, Slightly. I patched, I put a band-aid on my chest wound. Surprisingly not. I got my uh, short rest. Right? Yeah, we got a short, we rest. a short rest. Mm. I'm, I, I'm a little hurt. I have she, a few uh... She does say as you turn, well, I cannot Here's a paper cut. bless it's your weapons. Three hit points missing. I can bless your bodies. Yeah, if she's offering uh, free healing, I'm going to take um, it. And so she offers to protect the three of you by casting aid as a second, as a third level spell on all of you. So you, your hit point maximum increases by 10. Um, and uh, if any of you do need healing, she'll, she will cast Prayer of Healing on you all um, and so you each regain 18 hit points as well so we add is it 10 temporary hit points or is it no our, it's our max real hit points goes up? it's real hit points what? Yeah. it lasts for eight hours oh, okay. nice I'm so strong now oh I feel oh, no, no, no. better I feel like more good <laughs> More good. More good than usual. Yeah, and your words caught up too. You know, <laughs> I'm just going through a lot of changes right now, and I'm, I'm losing track. You're mostly shadow. I'm mostly shadow, and now I have more life to give. Mm. So there are two passageways leading down into the catacombs. One to the east. Well, one to the, the effectively the northeast, and one to the northwest. Which one will you take? Veo, use your nose. I go up to the door and I... The door is open. Oh. And the passageways both go down a set of stairs. I stick my head through the passageway and I sniff a little bit. Okay. Um, you can actually smell in the air. Um, which which passage are you going to? Um, it was north, east and north, yeah. west? East or west, basically. East. I'm going to sniff at east. Okay. <laughs> east. Okay. Sniffing at the east, you can smell. Um, you, you sniff down that way, looking down the passageway. And as, as I said, as you look down the passage, it's a high arched passage that descends down into the halls below. And then it breaks out into a T intersection. Yeah. And at the intersection is a very large alcove where on a great pedestal, there is a 10 foot tall statue of a uh, of a um, an angel hmm. um, she is bear she bears um, the statue itself is made of marble and her wings are pull are pulled in close to her and in front of her she is bear she has her hand resting on in front of her on a massive circular shield made of bronze that's about four feet uh, in uh, diameter. And in her other hand, she holds a spear pointed towards the heavens. Are these marble things or are these real items? The spear and the the spear itself is about 12 feet long mm -hmm. and the shield is four feet wide. It's a huge spear, uh, a huge shield. Both of them are real. Yep. Are Pluto. we robbing my <laughs> Are looking down the other passageway. What do I say? There is this, uh, a, a, a similar... It, the other passageway is very identical. Again, it's a high-arched way that leads down to a um, an angelic... Uh, another angel. Mm -hmm. um, and he is... Um, he holds a sword in one hand that is as tall as he is. He's about, he's about 10 feet tall as well. And another four foot shield so his hands are balanced on the top of both the shield and the weapon the the weapon is also real uh, and although it appears to be made both their weapons be, appear to be made of solid metal mm -hmm. and both the shields are real as well so they their their hands are resting on the shields and then the base of the shield is held against the is on the ground they're not like wielding the shield they're kind of resting mm -hmm. um, and the um, you you recognize 
these these figures are very well known in um, in myth. Um, these are the archangels Michael and Gabriella, and these two archangels uh, visit paladins um, when they are called to make an oath. Mm. I don't know if you want to try a four-foot shield, Pluto. <laughs> I want to see you try a ten-foot sword. <laughs> and now, guys, um, well, sorry, I'm not opposed to grave robbing. Um, I hear it's good luck. I What I am not opposed to would be to br- remove the weapons from their hands. I don't know if these could come alive. And I'll say, so for, with the construction of both the hallways, both the statues of the angels are visible from the top of the stairs. Mm. Do I smell any hints of difference in the air? Not up here. No. They smell the same, Pluto. <laughs> I tried. All right, so Thank you. sword or spear? Yeah, so Michael bearing the sword is to the west, and Gabriella bearing the spear is to the east. Pluto, what weapon do you like more? I grew up with the sword, but I've really come accustomed to the spear. So past or present? And uh, if I had to say right now, uh, I think the sword. Oh, okay. Go the way of the sword. Past. Okay. The past. Let's let's do it. But you're going behind because you're wow. having some null null. <laughs> you're uh, going first. Yes, I will go first. Oh, that's what you smell. Um. Okay. You ventured down the stairs. These ancient stone stairs. Um, of the catacombs the walls and the stairs of the catacombs are filled with niches all in these niches hold urns and skulls the mortal the the last remains of worshippers of the sacred fire often the skulls will have the names of who they were engraved on the skull or the urn will have a bear a small inscription um, and typically t- saying where how long they live Many of those that are in the urns along here are people who were very devout in their lives and wanted to be interned in the chap- the, the, the cathedral itself. Mm. Um, as you head down to the stairs, you can see the, ped- the, the, um, the cylindrical pedestal upon which the statue of Michael rests, and then surrounding Michael behind him uh, is a semicircular alcove with, again, just rows upon rows of these niches that have urns and skulls inside them holding the last the last vessels of worshippers of the sacred fire there are two sets of stairs that descend again to the um one to the north and one to the south and from the stairs you can see the light it just pours down like a beam into this chamber and rests upon and um, basically fully illuminating Michael, um, the statue of Michael. Um, and as it reaches him, the beams spread out and filter down the hallways as well in ver- in in various scattered directions. And so from the landing here, you can see that there is to the north there is a strong oaken door flanked by two larger niches of that have several full skeletal remains wrapped up and perched in the alcoves and then to the south is another set of these alcoves again with full um full catacombs that have fully resting bodies wrapped up in them and then a set of double doors to the south I'm, I'm just throwing this out there. There's a lot of skulls and bodies already. If if these things are going to wake up, uh, we're horribly outnumbered. That's why we just... We should save all of our strength for running. Like, as soon as we get these bones, it's like in and out. I'm really it's good like at a, running. It'd be like relay. Yeah. I also, relay implies that we leave two of us behind. Well, further behind, but not behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the deal. I still have your your mom's cape, right? Yeah, yeah. And Dimension Door, it's like a 
it's a doozy, right? It could, it could like, I could just say 500 feet upstairs into yeah. where we started. Like, I could take you and then Veo could run it. Or, or <laughs> you could teleport and we can also both tell, we could all teleport together, you know. I can't teleport into an area I can't see. So I can't go upstairs. And right? you're so fast, Veo. You were just bragging and stuff. That's true. So. <laughs> we we teleport like, we and more, you're already there. We're like, oh, more what? teleportation skills. Okay. I Pl- could run it. I can run it. Pluto, yeah. do you want the shield? I like can reach I? up and I put my hand on the shield. <laughs> it's going to fall on you. I mean, if you're offering it. Um, is it yours to keep? As you touch the shield, it um, you realize that it... It has a hinge holding it in place on the ground, and as you pull it, you see that there's machinery in Michael's arm, and it articulates, and the shield itself, as you pull the shield forward, Michael's arm extends forward, and as you push it back, it does. And the other side of the shield um, is... Well, the outside of the shield is bronze. The opposite side of the shield is covered in highly reflective glass. Can I turn the shield around? Yes. Oh. Um, do it. Do it. Okay, so I do that, and I start, like, moving. I, I'm looking around the room now for anywhere where I could point the light. As you turn the shield around, the back of the shield faces against the stairs coming down the light collects into the shield and across the 180 degrees where it's facing the light coming down the result is this beam of solid light of almost all light that you can focus and point down either staircase well guys let's choose a direction um yeah but should we do the other side as well yeah, maybe just turn it on. Um, Pluto, you're stronger than me. Okay, I'm going to run over to the other stairway mm-hmm. and just just do exactly what Sebastian did and just turn it 180 so it's pointing yeah. basically at the stairway again. So um, Gab- uh, Gabriella's shield works the same way. It nice. can be It can be rotated and turned around, and as long as it faces towards the stairs coming down, it collects the light and turns it into a beam that you can focus down either set of stairs. This could be part of the puzzle. There's a puzzle. I didn't know there was a puzzle. Well, but... I'm just assuming there's a puzzle now because of uh, light shields. Yeah, but also, I mean, maybe these undead don't like concentrated light. Beam lights. So, so let's use it. I bet you could, we can reflect the light all the way down as we go. Cool. That would be really cool. So that's cool why we're going to pick a direction and I'm going to point the beam that way. Yep. And then we're going to see if we can keep following the beam and I say I mean well I picked the sword so what do you guys pick north or south south rhymes with mouth and mouth is where I put my food (laughs) that's actually the probably the most logical I turn the shield (laughs) to point (laughs) I shrug and I turn the shield to point down the south towards the south doors. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I stand by my reasoning. I Point, can't argue with it. And it it illuminates the hall down here, filling the whole hall, and you can see that the height, um, the door itself is quite high. Um, and so the focus point of the beam, you've got a little bit of a leeway into, if you want to point it at at the bottom of the door or like the top of the door because the doors themselves are about 10 feet tall. I point it at the top of the door. Okay. What about the middle? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go down and I'm going to open the door while Sebastian's pointing okay. it. You push the doors open. Um, and there's another room beyond. Oh. <gasps> and the whole time I'm thinking like mouth. South. <laughs> Mouth. So this is why she's our guide. <laughs> Mouth. I make so. great decisions. Always based on food. <laughs> do, do, do. Okay. 
you open the double doors and the light hits upon the marbled mosaic floor here and refracts all across the room dancing about this arched and vaulted room which has six large sarcophagi uh, in it directly opposite you is another set of double doors the ceiling here is about 15 feet high arched and vaulted and once again there are well there are six large sarcophagi each bearing a carving showing those who occupied it um, above two of the sarcophagi, the most elaborate ones, one, there is a banner hanging down and a, an elaborate tapestry that shows the works and ministry of this flame keeper. And opposite that flame keeper, there is a sarcophagi of a paladin. And behind him on the wall is another massive shield, similar in design to the one held by um, Michael. It's about three feet wide, made of bronze, and there are a pair of great swords crossed behind it. Um, there is a set of double doors directly opposite you, and once again, all throughout this chamber are more niches filled with skulls going all the way up to the ceiling. And then the arched and vaulted uh, top, uh, way over top, uh, tells, uh, tells the story uh, of um, uh, Saint Durst, um, a paladin who lived about 500 years ago and was a re uh, renowned for slaying dragons. And so there are uh, there are murals of Saint Durst's battles with various dragons, culminating in his final martyrdom, where he sacrificed his life to slay an ancient dragon. Wow, that's like intense. Yeah. Uh, friends, there's another room. And, uh... Are you coming? I, I run down the stairs. All right. Um... I'm going into the room. Well, <laughs> I was well, going to say, do you want to check for traps, or...? No, I just stroll in. <laughs> um... I, I try to keep up with you. <laughs> um, I come in I, behind them. I walk into the room, and I look over to that shield. Does it look like there's, like, a beam of light going right where the shield would be. The light that you've shone down into this room hits the marbled floor and it is just refracted all through the room and gone all in different directions. The, so the, the beam has effectively ended. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to check this shield out. Okay. It would make sense if we can keep refracting the I'll light cover forward. You. Yeah, make sure that none of these uh, sarcophagi just fling open. While, while you're going over to the shield then, I want to take a look at that sarcophagi. Does it look like it's been disturbed like the ones upstairs? Does it look like it's got jistled or moved at all? No, it does not. Okay. I head over to the shield and kind of like peek behind it. It's a massive shield that probably weighs about 25 pounds. It's made of solid metal. And as you pull it away from the wall, it's hanging on the wall, but behind it you can see the same reflective glass as on Michael's shield. Does it look like it's, like, movable, or is it just something that comes off the wall? You could pull it right off the wall. I attempt to do so. Okay. You lift this massive shield three feet in diameter off the wall, and you are now carrying it. Do you need some help with that? No! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I got the Can next. Can you part. do the wobble, like the back and forth? Oh yeah, I'm like I'm like wobbling. <laughs> I wobble over to the center of the room. Uh, where does it look like? I look for where like the beam is hitting the floor, mm -hmm. and I place the shield with a loud you clang. Drop. Like, I drop it. And it's drop clang, 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 and then I slide it <laughs> into where the light yeah. is hitting. The, it, it catches. Uh, it catches the beam. Um, and because it's con, it, it's it's not quite perfectly concave. So once you've got it on the ground by by the beam, you can sort of hold it up and direct it, and you can catch the light again and refocus it in different in different directions. As long as they kind of point up a little bit. Guys, I'm doing it. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna run over to the next out the puzzle. and open those. I go aim it this way. And then 
I like prop it up so that it's can it shoot the beam at the next set of double doors? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you'd need to prop it up and hold the shield in place to get to catch it just right. Like if you leave it down there on the ground, it 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 just catches the beam and fires it up at the ceiling again. Can I use mold earth? To prop it? It's not loose earth here. Will mold earth affect work stone? No. Okay. Um... I could hold it for a minute. I don't have anything that... Unless, um... I mean, I got it. Just Yeah, but we want to leave it like that, don't we? We'll see. I Depends have an idea. Oh? <laughs> I reach into my tan bag... <laughs> And I remove dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, why? Why? <laughs> um a baboon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, <perfect>. <laughs> and uh I go um his name is um uh, uh Name him chimpanzee because he's a baboon. What what is his name? Chimpanzee, because he's because that's not what he is. <laughs> okay, uh, hey chimpanzee, um, your job now is to hold the mirror like this, <laughs> and I command him to hold the mirror. I okay. Slowly move out of the way and hand the mirror to this baboon. baboon? Chimpanzee. He's a, his name is chimpanzee. His name is chimpanzee, okay. but he is a baboon. <laughs> it's not confusing. <laughs> Does he follow orders? I don't know. I mean, I can... Is he good at it? Is he strong enough? I guess I could speak to him if we really want, but I don't want to waste his spells a lot to do. Look, he... (sighs) He has a strength of eight, and he's... He doesn't speak any languages. I also have a strength of eight, and you have a strength of eight. Um, so... Yeah, he's as strong as you. You should, should be fine. So then, if I can prop the shield up, <laughs> so can he. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does it work? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he he can hold the shield up and prop it up in the right direction. He kind of monkeys about with it, but uh, <laughs> you know, if you still, hey, 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 no monkeying around here. Yeah. Okay? It's good bet. <laughs> good chimpanzee. Oh, I was a little worried about these uh, sarcophagi, but. Seems like a non-issue. Let's open the next door. Cool. Yeah. Easy. Don't okay. you say it. What's <laughs> the worst that could happen? Don't no! you say it? <laughs> Why? It's Why? the classic helper too. We're gonna be in like the next room, and the light's gonna start to like shake, oh. and I'm gonna just yell, "Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, you Mister Chimpanzee." You hold it steady. Uh, Do you want me to shuffle it on down? Shuffle Shuffle it on down down the line. Shuffling, shuffling. Okay. All right. So the door opens up and reveals the chamber beyond. Interesting. Dun, 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 dun. So revealing. <laughs> so revealing. Um, it opens up into a um, 90 degree turn that goes back towards the uh, east. Here, um, the hallway continues, but the it ends in one side. What you can, and um, who's going first? Looks like yo. I'll quickly sneak up behind him. Good okay. So I'm like, hey, hey! Thought I was leading this. And there's a light following us, right? I guess there should be that a baboon is. May pointing. light guide your path, or something. <laughs> or something. <laughs> You know, whatever whatever they say upstairs in the Oh, um oh it's something like about the light, yeah. I think it was made like I do 
I mean, literally, we're using light to guide our path. So, I mean, pretty on the nose. Okay. Saint Vitruvia. So, this hallway ends in a very strange doorway. It appears to be a door made of solid stone, except in the center of the door, there is a large circular aperture filled with glass. Put the light in it. Put the light in it. Surrounding the door is a golden filigree that's that on it is depicted Saint Vitruvio riding Argana. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I come stumbling in behind you guys. Baboon, it, stay. Um I wanna walk in and I wanna look down the shorter hallway that ends. Mm. Um, is there anything there that I see that's shield-like or that's going to help reflect? Here, it, the, the hallway, there's a torch sconce here, and there are several great, um, again, catacombs with full-body skeletons that are wrapped up along the walls here. Mm. Is the torch lit? Uh, the torch is not lit. None of the torches down here are lit. Hey, uh... Yeah, there were also torches flanking either side of the sarcophagi in that room that were not lit. lit. Sebastian, yeah. Remember when you burned uh, the queen's eyes out using a mirror? Yeah. Do you still have that? Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to do it? Reflect, oh yeah. Reflect the light down. I pull out my mirror, mm -hmm. and I try to capture the beam of light and shine it towards the glass. Cool. You grab the mirror, um, and. As you hold it, up, hold it up to the beam, your mirror isn't capturing the entirety of the beam. And as you push it towards the, the glass aperture, the light beam that it sends is very thin and doesn't fully fill the entirety of the, the beam here. You do have very good control with the mirror of, of the beam, but you might need something bigger than your hand mirror for this. Probably need to find another shield. Yeah, I start looking around. There's no shield hanging on the wall or anything. Anywhere that would indicate that there would have been one, or no? Searching, searching around in the immediate vicinity. Nothing. Not no. Nothing. Well, one thing we know is that there is the south way, right? And this is—you said that this is marked quite obviously with like, um, like the aperture. Does it have any like? Um, the, the aperture itself surrounding it, the circular pattern in the middle, is about two feet in diameter. And then it has this kind of focused depression that then ends in a crystalline piece of glass that is multifaceted and about uh, ten inches in diameter in the center. It's circular. Could we use your drift globe? Absolutely. That's a great idea. Because it has the... Daylight. Stuff? First, I'll try. Yeah, just light. If I if I turn on the light from the drift globe, so just casting the light spell, mm -hmm. and I want to do it. Um, bright light in a twenty foot radius, and dim light for another twenty. Could we even could we even take the the shield from the baboon, shine it on the shield, and direct it, still using that, so it's more concentrated, but we're not having to rely on getting all the shields light from. Mm -hmm. All the way. Uh, say again. Sorry. So it, it, the light is coming all the way from the top right now, shining. Yeah. Would it not be better to take the shield that the baboon has, put it down the hallway, and shine the drift globe light from there? Yeah, let's do that. Like we can. I can even stand in the hallway with it and shine it right into the into the shield baboon light. Into the yeah yeah. Call, can you call the baboon? Can I have over? you all roll me a d six, please? Oh no. <laughs> Always a good oh, thing. Oh, one. Six. Four. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's a that's a spread. We got a good spread going on. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, Sorry. As as you begin, as you pull out the drift globe, have you are, are you activating the drift globe now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm turning on the light spell, and we're we're trying we're messing with it. We're like. Mm-hmm. Talking amongst each other. Bring the baboon over. Mm. Bring yeah, the baboon all, over. All, I feel like we're all huddled around here trying to figure out yeah. how to get light. Bring As the, the baboon. No, baboon's still here carrying the shield. Oh, yeah. Okay. As the light spell emanates down this hallway, there is a clarion ringing um, as the light um, shines upon all the niches through, through this area. And one of these skulls gasps. <gasps> oh, turn the light off. Turn uh, the light off. I turn the light off. <laughs> um, and as it gasps out, quite suddenly, the like a chorus of sighs, the other skulls and bodies down here begin to cry out. <sighs> Um, gasping and sighing as if the light is like air to them. Oh, this is why we use a beam. This is Um, why we use a beam. And they like it though. It's nice. As they, they, as the gasping resonates down the hall and continues through all, all the, the, the skulls and, and even the, some of the jars of ashes shake at the gasping. Um, you can hear the sound of grinding stone as something pushes against one of the sarcophagi. Baboon, get out of there. Roll for initiative. (laughs) (laughs) What did we do? (laughs) We figured out the puzzle. (laughs) Uh, 17. Sebastian? 16. So there's... <laughs> Veil? 21. Veil. I gasp. <laughs> Just to fit in. <laughs> I'm like, eh. <laughs> no. No, no. Okay. Veil, as the gasping resonates outward um, you see one of the skulls in one of the niches begin to lift itself up and take to the air as one of the as several of the other uh, wrapped skeletal bodies push their way out of their burial cloths and step into the hallway as well So we're not killing them, right? I'm killing whatever's in front of me. Cool. Okay. cool. I, I mean, they'll get back up, but maybe we just need to leave them in the dark. I'm going to give know. the baboon the <laughs> drift globe and just let it run through them. <laughs> run You're going to wake everything up. Oh, wake or... everything up. Don't do that. At once. The How baboon's as good be? as dead. We're hearing this happening and their sarcophagi is moving. Maybe what they need is a little bit of darkness. <laughs> oh, God, baboon. <laughs> he was just trying to help. He just wanted to be part of the team. Oh, there's one behind oh, me. No, the floating skull. And they're gasping. So that's not weird or anything, watching a skull gasp for life. Now the question is, do we go forward or back? Forward or back? <laughs> so many. We didn't see any holy water either. <laughs> I don't have my my holy club. <laughs> oh, what is that? What is this? Oh. Good, 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 good. All right. So, first up is Veo. Um. So. As a uh, 
I'm going to turn around and immediately say, Did you happen to know where Vitruvio is? <laughs> We're just, just looking for Vitruvio. Maybe his thigh, maybe his jaw, we don't know. Uh, and as I do this, I'm like taking my bow out. Did they say anything to me? Um, one of them whispers out, You defile this place with impure light. Okay, no, so no? All right, and I take my bow and I fire at this guy in the corner. Cool. I have a wand. Uh, first shot. Oh, uh, critical miss. Wah, wah. <laughs> I'm shaking a little bit because I'm like freaked out by these skeletons coming off the wall. Stop uh, missing. I know, always on my first <laughs> Go, Bale, go. Listen, I got it out this time, okay? 20. Yeah. All right. Woo, woo. It is a hit. Well done. Woo. Um, and I get an extra D8 for my Dread Ambusher. The skeletal bodies that step out of the... Um, the sarcophagi and the cat- uh, and as they pull the the sheen of the their burial robes off of them, they pull up the weapons be kept beside them. Several of them carry spears, and others carry um, uh, swords in two hands. So I got twenty damage on this guy right here. Alrighty, the arrow resounds out. Um, smashing bone and uh, flex of armor, but he still stands. Yeah, I mean, just go back to sleep. We're just so we'll leave the light off. It's fine. And I take my last shot at him with a um, 22 to hit. That is a hit. Smash him with another arrow for um, 23 damage. He collapses into a pile of bones and armor on the ground. Was that with a loud clatter? This guy? Yep. Yeah. Well, he's probably going to come back, so um, I would not recommend we stay here for these guys. Yep. Do you want me please to leave them? Leave the, yeah, please leave, leave where, them, them there. where they are. So <laughs> I'm going to, as my movement, now that he's gone, um, use my um, feline agility and uh, double my movement, but I'm also going to use my cunning action to... Um, if I disengage as my bonus action, is it disengaging only one person or um, as the rest of my movement? Uh, when you disengage, um, do I have to be based with someone? You, uh, your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks for the rest of the turn. Cool. So I'm going to disengage, and I'm going to start running back through the room, but I'm going to stop at the double doors on the other side, and I say, come on, guys, this obviously was not the right way to go. <laughs> you uh, you have a speed of, uh, how far can you go this turn? 60 feet. 60 feet? Okay. Because uh, so that, that room is 60 feet itself, so just... Okay, so maybe just shy. I'm probably a bit closer to this one. That's okay. Okay. Or not really. That's okay, either way. Okay. Alrighty. You, as you cross the room, you can see another skull rising up out of the niches. And it and as it howls at you, beams of flaming light uh, come from its eyes um, towards you. Um, and Veo, you are shot by it. Ouch the one on the opposite room, side of the room. Mm-hmm. And it gets a 24 and an 8 to hit. 24 hits. Cool. Uh, that is going to be um, 15 points of fire damage. Ow! Meow. Um, and as it cries out, around it forms a corona uh, of brilliant light that is almost blinding to look at the skull fl- uh, uh, floating out. Um and as such, while this corona surrounds it, attacks against it will have disadvantage. Um, the other uh, one that flies out fires its beams of light towards Paluto, uh, and one, um, and it. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, it uh, actually cries out um, with kind of this 
wrathful rage and a blossom of brilliant energy explodes down the end of the hallway um and sebastian and pluto both of you can make dexterity saving throws oh my favorite as this column of radiant flame bursts through the the edge of the that hallway Fourteen, eleven. Okay. Um, Sebastian, you fail. Uh, Pluto, you succeed. Ooh! Um, I uh, jump in is... front of Pluto. <laughs> um, Pluto, yeah. no! Uh, this Maybe. is a flame strike spell. Uh, what? This is the spell flame strike. That's okay. Um, and that's not good. You each, uh, you Pluto, you succeeded, and. The total is eight. So it is um, 12 radiant damage and 13 fire damage. I want to use my shield evasion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. <gasps> and I, and I, you, you, you standing in the way and with my shield, all the fire gets absorbed. And you're just kind of covered in fire and... Like, radio. I still get hit. Oh, 100%. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sorry, I sorry that I made you that... Like, yeah. You were saving oh, me no, or you're... something. No, I'm so protecting... I jumped He's in protecting. front of you, I'm and so... the little bit that got past me, you block with your shield, and you're <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I'm fine. And I... I'm I'm charred and sad. But with the Radiant, you're less shadow now. It think... hurts me more. <laughs> like, I... <laughs> Ludo, it is your turn. Um... Ooh. I collapse in front of you. I I turn off the drift globe. Okay. Is that what does that take to do? Is that your action? Bonus action? Uh action. Okay. Um I'm gonna uncast the light spell. Whoops. Okay. And um Just um, leave me. <laughs> Uh, Carry me with you. Um, I'm, ooh, boy. I'm gonna stand over my friend's burnt corpse. <laughs> okay. I'm still alive. I'm just very and badly you're burned. Saying run, run. All right. And I'm running. Sebastian, you're up. As Pluto stands over my corpse. corpse. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Sorry. I'm going to command with my bonus action, my uh, baboon. I go, baboon, come here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bring the bring the shield. Okay. Um, the Make a wisdom saving throw for the baboon. It is very terrified because there's four skeletons. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Whatever it was, he failed. <laughs> uh, it starts freaking out. It drops the shield and it leaps on top of one of the sarcophagi and starts screaming and um, <laughs> making baboon noises. No, Jimetsy! As the animals. Bad <laughs> so. Sebastian, it's your turn. Sorry, um, now it's your turn, Sebastian. Pluto is standing over me heroically. I crawl out from under his legs and start running. <laughs> oh, wait. We were supposed to run. And. <laughs> uh, it looks like I'm going to get to about here and it's going to get a little dicey. So I pull out my wand and I throw a skeletal hand towards the closest skeleton and I cast Chill Touch. Nice. That's a bad touch. Ooh. Uh, 26. Uh, that is definitely a hit. Thought so. Pew pew. That was sad. <laughs> that was really sad. That was really sad. Okay, so that does two damage. <laughs> so it's more like a chill tickle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm panicked and I throw the hand and it like brushes his cheek <laughs> gently. Gentle caress. Um, but he now does have disadvantage on attacks against me. Okay. Well, that's relevant because it's their turn. Uh, anything else? <laughs> uh... I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move the rest of my movement to base myself with the one who I just brushed. Okay. <laughs> I get closer to him. I brushed his cheek, and now I'm running towards him, screaming, in a in, a, in an attempt to be intimidating. Okay. Ah! The uh, yeah. These the skel um the skeletal paladins uh each two of them turn towards each of you. 
closing in on on you both. Ah. Um, and as the, uh, the skeletons encircle around Veo and encircle around Sebastian, blocking the doorways. Oh. See, smart, smart, undead. Same with, with Veo. Yeah. Um, is it really dark in here now? Um, no, because the light is still coming in from above, illuminating around. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so two attack there are attacks made against each of you. Um, Veo again a ten and a eight. Nope. And a fifteen and a ten. Uh, one That's of them hits. One hit. The fifteen hits. Okay. And that is going to be. Uh, 11 points of slashing damage as one of the great swords comes down upon you. Sebastian, I get a natural 1 and an 18. And a 8 and an 18. Two of those hit. Okay. So you take uh, 10 points from the first great sword and uh, 8 points from the spear. As they turn around and almost as if this ancient battle knowledge has come back to them as they turn and though there is this kind of the the their skeletal forms have the bearings of noble warriors used to fighting in formation as this knowledge has come towards them but as they move and fight it's all the the light in their the pits of their skull illuminate like eyes that are almost dull, this dull golden light. Um, and then two against Pluto. Uh, getting a big old 14 and an 8. And an 18 and a 23. 23 hits. So one of the great swords comes down for only five damage. Uh, that kind of just chinks through, uh, batters uh, kind of the pauldron of your armor with the great sword. Ow. And with that, we go to the top of the round with Veil. Um, in this room, uh, how, how tall is the ceiling? 15 feet. Mm, okay. Um, I want to still start to make my way out of the room, calling to the guy saying, guys, come on, they're not going to go down. I'm trying. And I want to uh, use my bonus action again to disengage. Um, can I run like between them? Um, with an acrobatics check, yes. Cool. Do it. Ten. <laughs> Ten. Um, looking for more than that. Oh. Uh, to so you'll you'll need to spend, uh, to you'll need to spend movement to get past them. Okay. As a result, uh, so you need to spend half your. You either need to square it out and move around them. Yep. Uh, because you can't go through their space. You can't go through their spaces. Okay. Yep. Um, then I'm going to um, uh, go around them. So okay. I have 30 feet of movement. Um, and then I just start taking shots at... I'll start with the guy in the cool. left. Cool. And you use cunning action to disengage? To disengage, Correct. yeah. Okay. Uh, 23? That is a hit. Nice. Nice. Bam. 22 damage. Uh, that actually sails right through him and he collapses to the ground. Whoa. Oh, nice. Whoa. Uh, and then I take a shot at the other guy. Yep. A 13 to hit. It does not penetrate the chainmail armor protecting him. Okay. Um, did, how much movement do I use? All of it. All of it? Okay. Well, 30. Um, that's it. I'll, I'll stay there. And okay. I yell at the guys, come on, guys! Alrighty. I'm being stabbed on the ground. The skulls, uh, it hovers around and it turns and fires more rays of radiant light towards you, Veo. And I hiss at it. <laughs> uh, getting a 20 and an 11 to hit. 20 hits. Uh, for uh, 11 points of radiant damage. And the other one fires towards Paluto getting a 18 and a 14 to hit. Miss! Deflected Thankfully. rays of light With from my shield! shield. Uh, e, uh. Pluto, you're up. Uh, and I'm gonna just start uh, swinging at these monsters. Cool. 
<laughs> um, I'm going to immediately use Precision Strike to make that an 18. That is a hit. For, uh, uh, ch -ch -ch I'm using my longsword uh, for 15 damage. It cracks through bone and metal, but it's still the creature still stands. And I'm going to swing again for like a 25 to hit for 12 damage. And the second blow sends the rib cage and femur scattering across, uh, uh, scattered across the floor. Yeah. And then I, I'm going to shield bash this one. Cool. Away. Um, I get a six. <laughs> I get a 21. <laughs> Send him uh, flying back, reeling five feet backwards yep. towards the skull man. And I run towards, um, and I get, get myself right up there against, uh, these two dudes. Cool. They go, Sebastian, I'm coming. Pluto. It is your turn, Sebastian. I reach out for Pluto's hand. <gasps> and then I, I look at him. I make eye contact with him. And I'm like, I'm sorry. And I snap <laughs> my fingers and I'm going to cast darkness. Oh. <laughs> oh I thought you were going <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to do something completely different yeah. too when you said no. that. I was like, oh, he's fireballing himself. No, no. no. <laughs> I cast darkness on myself using my two sorcery points. I thought he was going to thunderstep. <laughs> yeah. I scream. I thought you were going to grab <laughs> No, but we, I say I'm thought, sorry, Nicholas. We thought we were going to have an incident on our yeah. hands. No, I'm trying not to create an incident, but I'm making it very dark for a moment. And then with that darkness, um, I'm hoping they can't see me in my magical darkness because that would suck. I'm going to make a run for it. Okay. That does provoke... Um, they can't see you, so that doesn't provoke an opportunity attack. You're casting the darkness on yourself. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I think that's my whole turn. Okay. Hi. Running. So you just see a blob of darkness moving through the room. Okay, the skeletons. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, two of them are... Three of them are down? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Um... <laughs> No! One of them gets back up. <laughs> the bones collecting together uh, as it as it stands back up and takes up its weapon, but that's its entire turn. Um, and the two then, uh, see, uh, having Sebastian disappear behind them and this another large imposing man now standing in the doorway, uh, they race into attack, uh, getting a... Um, Getting an 18, a 23, an 8, and a 21 to hit. Uh, 21 and 23 hit. Okay. It's going to be 8 points of damage from the greatsword. Ow. And from the spear, uh, another 8 points of damage. Ow. The other stumbles about in the darkness in a random direction because he doesn't know where things have gone. Um, and so... Uh, he stumbles backwards and kind of bumps into Sebastian and swipes wild, widely with his spear uh, with disadvantage. Uh, and it whistles by you, Sebastian, through the Whoa. darkness, but does not hit. Seeing it coming, I step out of the way. Cool. Um, and we go to the top of the round with Vale. Um... I continue, continue to back up, and now I'm like, oh, there's, now there's a blob of darkness. There's a blob of darkness in front of me. Um, and I don't want to go too far. Is the skull included in it? Yes. Okay. I mean, what's... Is it? That's right. Uh, it's on the periphery, so I'll say no. The okay. skull is not. It is very bright and glowy. I take some shots at it, but it's with disadvantage, Yes, right? that's correct. Take some shots. Do my best. Still got a 19. <laughs> that is a hit. <laughs> nice. It's 23. Okay. Woo! The arrow resounds through the skull, breaking out the back half of it and sending parts of its face scattering all over the place, but it still floats forward. Ooh, I take my other shot at it. Oh, that one's less fun. Um... <laughs> Eight damn it. Uh, or eight, well, eight to on. hit. Eight to hit. Oh, yeah. It made its concentration check on Blur. Eight yeah. to hit. Okay. No, it sails past. Um, and I'm, like, waiting anxiously to see, like, what happens with the darkness. Because I'm, like, I know Pluto's back there. I know you're you're on your way. But I'm, like, come on, guys. 
is and I'm kind of starting to like pace a little bit on the spot. Okay. The flame skulls. It uh, it comes around the corner and Hello. fires its rays at Pluto. Ah! Neither of which hits. They sail past. The other comes, flies out of the darkness towards Veo, getting a critical hit. No! <laughs> uh, and Veo, that is going to be five, uh, eight, nine. Five plus eight plus nine is... 22? 20, 20, 20. 5 plus 8 plus 9, yeah, is 22. So a searing beam of concentrated light sails towards you and strikes you for 22 radiant damage. I'm hurt! <laughs> Guys, I'm hurt! Are you still alive? I have 8, eight health. You feel I'm 8, eight. healthy. Oh. It has one more beam. Oh. Which gets a natural 1! <laughs> oh. Balance. <laughs> you wouldn't hurt a Perfectly cat. balanced. Okay. Um, Veo, you're up. Oh, uh, um, oh no, sorry, not. no, it's actually Pluto's turn. I'm sorry, yeah. I got out of order. Like, um, uh, ah, <laughs> come back, blob of darkness. I'm start swinging at this thing in front of me, getting a uh, 24 to hit for 10 damage. Nice, and uh, a 16 to hit. It is a hit for uh, 12 damage. The two slight sword swipes cut off its head and take it out of the legs and it collapses to the ground. And I shield shove the other one for a 16. I get a 10. And I I push it out of the way and I just start booking it towards the uh, darkness. In the, in and the, I'm the feeling warm <laughs> cover of darkness. <laughs> wildly for... <sighs> I know I can Don't smell. run towards the light. <laughs> and... and uh, uh, I know it takes a bonus action to command my baboon, but I still yell out, Baboon, help me! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even though he might uh, just... The baboon name is too scurries after you and grabs onto your leg in the darkness. <laughs> finds you, finds your voice, just latches onto your leg. <laughs> He's just hugging. And I'm like, I'm doing like the dad crawl with like a toddler on his leg where it's just <laughs> nice. like you're walking and there's like a thing on you. Okay, the skeletons. Do any... I've got... What about one, me? Two... Oh, Sebastian. I'm sorry. Monty. I'm, uh, I'm out of it. Jeez. So in the middle of the darkness, I hear Pluto <laughs> running towards me, and I reach out my arm, and I'm just like, Pluto, take my hand. Ah, I have a monkey. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Sorry, baboon. I'm going to keep moving. I'm guessing that I can't move him with me, though, but I'm, I'm imagining that I'm reaching out my hand and backing up. Okay. Uh Oh, there's a flame skull thing in the way. <laughs> yeah, but they can't see you in the darkness uh, as long as you don't move through their squares. Can I move around them? Yeah, you can go the diagonal too. Yep. Cool. All right. We got the idea. There's darkness. Yeah, the darkness just rushes <laughs> towards me, and I'm like, whoa. Um, so I, I do that, and then I'm going to um, throw out my wand and cast a firebolt at the... Uh, Flame skull. Does Go that, for it. I don't know if it's immune to fire because it's a flame, flaming skull, but I hope my fire is evil and its fire is good, and that will balance it out. 21. It hits, but it absorbs all the fire. Mm. So it, it we figured not, that out. is not damaged by the flames. That was a bad move. Mm. I regret everything. Pluto! Fire! These skeletons. So I've got three down? Yes. None of them get back up. So all the darkness left. I have a baboon on me. I reached out my hand and said, grab my hand. Um, the <laughs> skeletons, all of them rush in pursuit. Uh, um, the, two, the two in the hallway, these two, they get back down and they go back into their... their yeah. Little layers, but the other two that are still in this chamber rush towards uh, Pluto. Hi. And though there is a flurry of steel, one spear strike gets a twenty-one to hit. Oh, for eight points of damage. Oh, but the rest do not find their their targets. Uh, it's my baboon scared them. Yep. Yep. Top of the round. Veo, you are in the darkness. Uh, back I move backwards Okay. out of the darkness. Yeah, the darkness envelops this hallway, and in fact, actually, as a result, 
because of where where the darkness is positioned now, it is blocking the light from getting into this room, and thus it is now pitch black down in that in in that room. Oh, perfect. So, uh, I'm just gonna roll the the skeletons attacks against you, Pluto, with advantage. Actually, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, oh, with advantage because they can yeah, see yeah because the they dark? can see in the dark and you can't. I really can't. Yeah, you know that about me. Yeah. So that room is completely... So basically, as, as Sebastian went up that way, the room completely blacked out, and he just got stabbed in the dark. I said I was sorry before I did it. It's my escape cool. plan. It doesn't really okay. benefit my, anybody else. Um, my baboon isn't helping me. Veo. And as that happens, I'm just like, ah, they'll make it up eventually, and I take a healing potion. Okay. Because, uh, no. ouchie. Um... Just a potion of healing is ten. ten? Yep. Okay. Um, the uh, the flame skull. Um, it. Uh, they both focus their fire on Pluto. Oh, Can Pluto. the one in the darkness oh. see out of the darkness? It moves into the room. Uh. Pluto, <laughs> how are you um, doing? Even with it. The- oh, there we go. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, through a barrage of flame, I get. A critical hit ah! and an 18 is my next highest uh, so the crit is not a crit thanks uh, Sebastian's dad and uh, the 18 misses so you take 10 radiant damage ah at least it lights my way yes it does <laughs> yeah, it now does. I can see where the as, exit as, as the uh, the flame skull comes into the room because um, the flame skulls illuminate a 15 foot radius out from them. So as it comes out of the darkness, <laughs> it illuminates the room again. So actually, it didn't get advantage. Okay, so I got a red. Co- no, you no, don't take no. The crit anyways, so it, it shot yeah. me, and, yeah. and I see the light where it comes from, and I go, oh, that's where I had to go. Darkness and light, why you gotta be so confusing? <laughs> so much. <laughs> we got this. Who's we up? We got this. Uh. Veo drank a potion. Yep. Pluto's up. So the room is illuminated because the flame skulls are now in it. And um, I'm surrounded. Yep. Cool. Uh, I start swinging at the closest one. I get a natural one. <laughs> I'm panicking. Ah! Ah! And then, oh, uh, a, a 27 to hit. A for hit. Uh, 13 damage. Alrighty. Uh, is that one even touched? No. 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 All and I'm gonna, tr- <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try to push it away. Okay. Um. Uh, <laughs> I get a ten. I get a nine. <laughs> Woo! I push it away, and uh, I think I'm gonna take at least an opportunity to attack from that one. Okay. As I run, it gets a six to hit. Woo! And the baboon's attached to me. Yeah. Come, my baboon you friend. You race out into the darkness. You hear the creaking of bones and the sliding of stone as the disturbed guardians return to their slumber. I close the double doors. <laughs> I lean against the wall. I mean, they warned us it was going to happen. I, I dismiss my darkness spell as I close the doors. And I look at you and I'm like, I said take my hand. I'm holding my monkey ever so closely. (laughs) And I go, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. Are you going to ask me if I'm okay? (laughs) You're fine. No. I'm not okay. I'm not. I'm not okay. Oh, yeah. I'm actually totally fine. After I start complaining about myself, I turn and see Veo and she's like covered in blood. And is that your blood or is that skeleton did blood? Did you guys leave the shield in the room? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> the monkey dropped it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go back in eventually. It'll be fine. Listen. Yeah, we'll they, take a rest. <laughs> they didn't wake up until we messed up the light situation. So if we just yeah. walk back in there calmly and pick the shield up, it should be okay. Exactly. Okay. I like the element of surprise, and so I say, surprise, and I open the door, and I'm going to run back in and try to grab the shield. Okay. As you open the door, roll for initiative. Oh, no. <laughs> just just you for now. Right. Oh, no. I get a two. Oh, wait, no. I get advantage. I get a eight. Okay. 
So as you rush into the room to grab the shield, one of the sarcophagi begins to push itself, push open again. And you are able to run into the room, grab the shield, and run back out. Um, and as it does so, it, it lurches out and it th- hurls the spear towards you, getting a 12 to hit. Oh, and so, so it deflects against you as it throws the, the, <laughs> the, the spear at, uh, towards you. <gasps> and I, I picture it like hitting the door yeah, as, as you as close you it, it behind yeah. me. And then you, as, it, as the door closes, like that spear gets stuck there and then you hear a thwap of a thwap, thwap <laughs> as two more spears are thrown towards it. <laughs> Guys, I got the shield. <laughs> Good job, Pluto. Um, you guys want to try the I, I need other a, passage? I may need a nap first. <laughs> Do you have another nap? tiny hut that we can use? Yeah. Yeah? I always have a tiny hut. Can we use the tiny hut? Do you guys want to go upstairs for a minute? and? Uh... Yeah, yeah, we're pretty close to upstairs. Yeah. It's not like we're like way down in the deep. I mean, Let's like, go upstairs. I just got stabbed straight through my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can see through that. I can. Yeah, look. Wow. Oh, please don't do that. Oh, God, I'm going to pass out. poking it. So you guys yeah, want to head, head back up and take a short rest? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, in that case, this sounds like the perfect place for us to take our short rest. So we'll see you after the break. And we are back from our break. We have enjoyed our Taco Tuesday, Yum. our Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Got some water in our system. Let's play some D&D. Woo! But first, a uh, big thank you to Tabletop Audio for all the ambient music that you're hearing tonight. Uh, check them out at tabletopaudio.com uh, to enhance your own game experience. It's all free. And be sure to visit our merch store to check out all the Dungeon Dudes merch for Dungeons of Dragonheim at uh, bit.com. L-Y slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Also check out the links below uh, to the the shelf uh, on Twitch as well as on YouTube. If you're enjoying the stream and you'd like to support our work, you can check out our Patreon by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Also, if you join our uh, if you join our Patreon, you get access to our Discord where you can chat with all of us about all the cool things relating to Drakenheim, D&D, really anything you want we're all there and you can chat with us on discord tonight's episode of dungeons of drakenheim has been sponsored by our very good friends at nerdarchy who have just launched their very first kickstarter out of the box encounters for dungeons and dragons and the fifth edition of the world's greatest role-playing game it contains now with all their stretch goals over 55 ready to run encounters designed for the way dungeon masters actually run their game Check them out now on Kickstarter. It's only running for another couple uh, couple more weeks here in 2019 uh, until August 14th or 15th, I believe. And then it's all over. Um, So be sure to get there. Yep. Uh, It's till August 18th. (laughs) Pardon me. Get get on there. Check them out. It's a real great value and uh, by some awesome folks in our community. With that, let's return to the ruins. We are underneath the great cathedral of St. Vitruvio, where our heroes sit at the steps around the great basin of the altar, licking their wounds after a run-in with the deathless guardians beneath. So so we went west last time, correct? You went west and then south. So, um, uh, south to the west, not the best. I think what we need to do is, you know, head to the east, because that's probably where the least amount of damage will happen. And then if we go south, still follow the mouth to my tummy, because I always follow my tummy when I'm doing directions. What do you guys think? Is this how you've navigated all of all of Drakenheim? Are you serious like this? Is this how you're doing? <laughs> is this is this like how your navigation tool? Have you works? just been like, using like a rhyme? rhyme? Is just random rhymes? <laughs> Finding out the trade secrets is horrifying. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Have you just rhymed your way through survival for 15 years? <laughs> Look where it's gotten me. I can't, I can't uh, yeah, argue with cannot that. cannot be mad at it. Can't argue with um, the results. Theory. And by theory, I mean it. it's a proven theory because mm-hmm. we just experienced it. Uh, we probably need to use the natural light. And no more drift globes. Mm-hmm. No lighting torches. Mm-hmm. If we disturb a room, it's bad. Mm-hmm. 
if we can just navigate through here using the light to guide us, we just need to pick up every shiny shield that we see and place it. I mean, we're, we're going to carry the shield with us. So well, we have an I'm not going to carry it. There's a baboon that's going to carry it. <laughs> okay. That's true. <laughs> How long does that baboon exist? Oh, tr true. <laughs> These are all good questions. They're good questions. Good questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> you got beat around a bit by, you know, some dead paladins. This is fine. You're fine. Um, okay, and Pluto, when I say take my hand, I expect you to take my hand. Just Oh, uh, it lives so the demanding. next dawn. <laughs> It's Are you listening to me? <laughs> no, I was totally ignoring you and reading about my uh, my baboon. I yeah, don't listen to him when he takes that attitude with you. <laughs> yeah, he's getting all... He's getting all <laughs> so you go really, forth with your magical baboon down the other opposite corridor. <laughs> I'm so sorry I didn't hear it. Baboon down. Okay. Yep. Like, the, like the way to the west, these halls uh, have the same architecture the skull-filled niches and catacomb-filled catacomb walls, and the great statue of the spear-wielding arch archangel Gabriel, um, bearing forth a shield of the same design as the one worn by Michael. As you come down the steps, you can see that there are passageways leading both to the north and the south. This time to the south, there is a simple, large, wooden door, singular door. But to the north, the doorway is large and made of a stone construction, similar to the door the way that you saw deeper into the complex. This door also has a large aperture and a circular pattern to it, and with the, the circular gemstone to it, but it is engraved with the coat of arms of the Von Castles. Oh my gosh. But we're not, we're not, we're not here for any Von Kessels, are we? I feel like anything leading us to the Von Kessels might give us some information about my I dad. I think we should check it out. I'm just worried that we're going to have to fight a whole bunch of undead Von Kessels, but I don't Yeah, but they were paladins, right? well, We just don't turn on the drift globe, we don't turn on the torches. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen? No, why are you saying <laughs> No! And turn it to the Von Kessel symbol. Okay. If you turn it to the Von Kessel symbol, the aperture in the center suddenly flares with light, spins around, and these um, circular blades focus the light, and the doorway then rotates and opens. Oh, cool. After you guys. At least we know that works. Yeah. I... Uh confidently walk in. I walk in behind him slightly less confident. My okay. baboon trailing carrying a uh, bronze shield. I How do we close I'm it? still standing by the shield watching you guys walk in. <laughs> and just he's, and he's like doing like the like the, the, the same kind of thing you were doing, like the shuffle. Like it's trying, still pretty trying heavy. his best. Well those look like scary things. I'm not nervous, you're nervous. Yeah I'm not nervous. You're nervous. I am nervous. No, I'm nervous. I, I come, like, poke my head in, so I, I do come up. Here. Okay. Do, do, do. I, like, poke my head in, and I'm like, I'm, I, I am nervous, guys. I'm really nervous. Um, I'm not worried. Um, what I am thinking is... As long as whatever we do in here, we do it quickly. Okay. Uh, I feel like time moves against us in this. You come down to a large scenario. chamber. A large L-shaped chamber. At the base of the stairs, as you come down, um, in a uh, large alcove against the wall is a massive construct of stone and wood that appears like a massive 12 foot tall knight of Drakenheim. It bears, it holds a great, uh, an iron great sword in front of it. And you can see around in, in the plates between its armor are the mechanical gears. And something about its construction 
is reminiscent of the executioner. <sighs> and there are two of them flanking the sides of a massive vault door that bears a double aperture in the middle. So this L-shaped hallway at the bend of the L is where this door is diagonally. And right opposite the, dia- the, the door is a large plaque upon which are two hooded figures holding a, um, a large metal plaque that is made of the same reflective material, but also has a list of writing on it. And it is directly opposite the doorway that has the two aperture lenses on it. The doorway itself being some uh, 14 feet tall, and this chamber itself rising up to a height of 20 feet. Um, The two um, guardians flanking this doorway are inert. And opposite this room is another doorway of the same construction as the doorway that just opened but the aperture is facing the other way. Interesting. Okay. So it is not the receptacle of the light, but the you can see that it w- that the receptacle of the light that was facing the, the way was on the o- opposite side of the store. So we probably need to bounce the light that way as well. Well, that door would open from the other side. Yeah, but I'm thinking to open the big door, there's two two <clears throat> Oh, you think pieces. we need both beams in here to open this, this door? This room, yeah. on the other hand, yeah. does not have the niches filled with skulls. Rather, the, the walls here are murals depicting the line of the Von Kessels. If I observe anything on here, do I recognize the Von Kessels from... There is There are s- several of the murals here are... Several of the walls here are empty... They're meant to be f- locations for the gener- for future generations. Mm-hmm. Seems like the von Kessels were planning on at least another twenty generations, yeah. and the current the last generations uh, of von Kessels have not been painted here yet. Mm. So yeah, because that would have happened so suddenly, right? Like they wouldn't yeah. be. I. I walk into the room and like keeping my eyes on the two giant statues I like kind of move across the room to where the uh, the statue across from the door is mm-hmm. holding the scripture I turn to look at it can I read it yeah uh, the inscript uh, the inscription reads the actually the same passage that um, that Ophelia Reed quoted earlier when darkness bars the way, only by the light is the truth revealed. Ugh. <laughs> well, at least it gives us an indication of what needs to be done. So I think if we if we can find some more shields and we can direct the light from both sides this way, then maybe we can open this door. The light from the statue that opened this door, where is it resting? It rests... As it bounces down into the middle of the chamber... Um, it can be adjusted such that it hits the middle of the floor between the door and the statue itself. Uh, this might not be the best idea I've ever had, but can we get Baboon to reflect the, reflect the light um, onto the statue that looks exactly like the thing we're terrified of? Why? There's a statue on either side of the door. Yes. Mm-hmm. If we bounce the light on the statue, maybe that opens the door in the middle. Do you mean the the actual guardian cre- the, the Well, yeah, you're saying that the light bounces right in... It hits the floor. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm wondering at reflecting it oh. at, at the statue. I would think, think it would need to bad? reflect to the door. How... Does that angle work? Yep. Um, well, we would hit it against the this thing that Sebastian's looking at, and that would reflect it back into the door, right? It's got, like, reflectors... The, the inscription itself um, the, the inscription itself is made of reflective material and perhaps it could in fact bounce the light okay. Can we, okay then can we try bouncing the light at that I want to try bouncing it but I'm also worried that maybe not doing all of it at once yeah. might also cause an issue exactly I think maybe keeping in mind it, that this room is here it needs the double aperture and so like can, we, we I think we can do it it's just that we want to get the other one at the same time. That's what I think. We're yeah. also just assuming that it needs both. Maybe this 
room just has two entrances. No, so the the main door in the middle has two apertures. Ah. Yeah. And are they positioned listening. above each other, beside each other, within each other? Like, are they, like, depth? Uh, they're actually positioned one at- atop the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so probably I think we should two get... beams of light. And the last time we played with the light, bad things happened. I pull out my drift globe. No. Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? We're like, Why? Oh, Is that no, a bad no, thing? No, 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 no. Uh, okay. <laughs> I go, guys, I have it. Put that away. So then <laughs> if we go back up, over to the other side that we died at, but this no, we didn't die. No, the, the, the opposite way. Yeah, we go the opposite. We go n- north. South. Oh yeah, south is for the mouth. North is for the. Because we just went north here. Yeah, true, 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 true. So we north go, to go forth. North yeah. to go forth. Once again, it rhymes, so therefore it has to be correct. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but shouldn't we check the area to going south to Vitruvio where we saw it to see if it reconnects on the other side? Right. Well, okay. we need we need to pick. Like, no. are we more interested in finding out what this room is all about, or are we more interested in going elsewhere? I think if we can get Vitruvio's bone, then they can do their magic upstairs, and then we can explore a little bit down here. Once this place is secured, will they let us mess around down here? I mean, it could be, I guess, before we take the bone up that we do this part. That's what I'm thinking. I'm or wondering, you- like, it's not every day I get free reign at stomping through the cathedral what crypts. Do you, what do you I'm, think, Pluto? I'm kind of with... Before we get the bones, I want to get... I want to explore this. I really need to know the Von Kessel okay. lineage. Uh, only because I, I am worried that if we get the bones, and they might need our help upstairs, and they'll be like, can you guys help us? We're like, we're bone collectors. This is what <laughs> we do now. Gosh. Okay. We'll do this room first. So, you think we should... Go. And if we die, if we all die, I'll uh, you get to say I told you so. Okay. Okay. Noted. <laughs> In- Noted. So cool. west is work. best. Let's go west. Go west. Right. So we go back up. Come baboon. Back <laughs> down the baboon. Should he just leave it there? Or Actually, no? yeah, he can leave the or shield. Or we no. should take it just in case we need just it. Just in case we need it. Yeah. Um... So He's we go part back of the up, team. back down, and now we're going north. North to go forth. On the other hallway. North to go forth. Okay. Are you loving these set changes? I am loving these sorry, set changes. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so you go back around the other way to the to the north. Grab that one. A little behind the scenes, uh, Monte has to assemble these all by hand. <laughs> every day. He spends every waking hour assembling uh Assembling uh, Dwarven Forge. That's so many hours. For us. And sometimes when he builds big things, we don't even go in them. So then he, he just has to... He just does it for him. <laughs> it's all, it's all, I, it's all. I remember once in one of our own campaigns where I built this massive dungeon. And you guys didn't go there. <laughs> You're like, no, we want to do something completely different. I spent the entire afternoon building it. You're like, nah. And that is about the time Monty started asking us, what do you want to do next Yeah, what week? are you guys thinking of doing? What are you thinking of doing? Because I'm going to spend hours building it. You jerks. Uh, okay. You never called me a jerk. I was going to say, do we ever do that to you? Uh, no, right? No, you guys pick up on my cues. My cues are very obvious. <laughs> A big wink. <laughs> you can go left or right. Oh, because left, we're gonna go back left. there soon, anyways. When we awaken the golem things. When we what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, okay. I see. This. I, I see. mean, we I might make them. Here. <laughs> we might accidentally wake them up. Like that's just how. That's just how we do. This is where we should go. North to go forth. Whoops. Also, Whoops. Oh, also our minis. Oh, oh yeah. Pluto's, Pluto's got them. Also, before we go this way, I point the uh, the shield. Sure, that way. Where's my back? You open the doorway, so you've now gone back across the... <laughs> you just kind of wave at them and... and, and, and like, yeah, <laughs> as we walk by, we wave at Ophelia. We're like, hey, we're still working on it. The bones weren't this way. <laughs> So you go we'll back down the other way, and opening the door, you open into a circular chamber. In this circular, cha- um, 
The doorway here is quite high, uh, much higher than the other than the others leading in. It's this longer, narrow door about 10 feet high. And it opens up into a circular room with four stone benches surrounding a circular basin, la- a large circular font of water. Um, and you can, s- and the water actually smells very fresh. And um, hanging over the water in the center of the fountain is um, is uh, what you can see uh, is an angel, an archangel uh, known as um, Saint Lucius, uh, also known as the angel of mourning. And mourning not as in mourning, but as mourning, like crying. Sad. Um, and his wings are kind of furled down and collapsed along the, the statue. And his, his hands are out about three feet aside him, kind of in, in this, in, raised up about three feet apart, um, almost as if he is crying out to, um, to the God, like to the heavens themselves, why? Uh, as he kneels out over over the water, Holy and the water. the way the statue is built is it's a statue of marble, and the water is coming from his eyes. Aww. It's flowing out like tears into the into the pool. Um, I walk up, and uh, first of all, you said it, it's fresh, but I just want to sniff it because they said that if it's something else, it'll smell different. There's correct? silver powder in the water. <gasps> Holy water and silver. Dust, dust, yeah, dust. Um, but I want to like kind of tromp in in the fountain um, and look at the statue a bit closer. Yeah. Because um, I want to see if it's wide enough where or it where he'll hold the shield. Did Did she just jump Is there in the guy? holy water? She did, she in did the just holy jump water? in the holy water, <laughs> and the arms would fit the shield. And the, the, the the statue itself, you can see. There is a, underneath the water. There are four handles on the base of the statue. Mm. Oh, guys, help me rotate the statue so that its arms face that other door. Yeah. You want me to just do it? <laughs> we can help. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there might be like a more like too many cooks in the kitchen sort of thing. I mean, if I don't have to go trudging through holy water right now, I'm cool. I got this. And I shake a little bit. I mean, I'm sure we can. Yeah. Bale, can you try to move the statue? Yeah, I can try. Yeah. Um, Can we put the shield in it first? You wanna... Yeah. Baboon. His and name I is Chimpanzee. Call him, up and he... <laughs> call him by his name. Sorry, chimpanzee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hand the shield to uh, Vale. I'm like, oh gosh, because um, I have very weak strength. How about, how about you just put it up there, uh, Pluto? Okay, I one hand it up. <laughs> I hear you lift with your back, not your legs. Yeah. Ow. So you put the around? shield in the statue, and it it does. It fits in. Perfect. And Perfect. working together, you can rotate it in in the pool of water. Okay, guys, to the left. Aim the light. Aim the light. Okay. I'm I'm standing on I'm standing on the outskirts. Okay, so you aim it towards the exit doorway. The, the that okay yeah, the second yeah. door. The beam of like it's a regular door though. It doesn't have an aperture on it. That's fine. It's okay. busted. You open. aim it towards the door. Is there anything else in this room? I'm just oh, gonna yeah. take a turn around the room. There's two candelabras. Okay. And this room again does not have niches in it uh for uh any sort of um any burial it's not a it doesn't look like a burial room okay pluto what happens if you drink the water don't drink the water there's silver in it the ceiling overhead is arched and vaulted um and it depicts uh 12 stations um known uh, as the the 12 mercies of the martyrs. Um, it's religious scenes where various martyrs of the sacred fire um, granted mercy upon evildoers. Hmm. I mean, it's holy water, so it's got to be good for you. 
I want to fill my Good water for skin you? with it. No, but it's got okay. stuff in it. The silver. So yep. do sodiums, but <laughs> do, do, okay. does it? You, you do so. Okay, and then um, I'm not gonna drink it yet. I'm gonna save it for splashing on the undead. Did you just collect a vial? Yeah. Okay. Or, uh, and uh, where are you gonna aim the beam? R- right at the door. Right at the door. Dead oh, wait. on. Wait. Let's aim it just off the, to the side of the door, and then go through the door, and then we can always aim it after. But what if it yeah. starts something that we don't know? Well, That's true. the thing that I'm more worried about is usually if we aim it straight down the hallway, it doesn't hit any of the skeletons. If we aim it off to the side, I'm worried about it. Like, no, I meant like just to the, against the wall. Here in this room. Okay, so like we open the door, see what's behind it, and then we can aim it. Then and we then can move aim. the yeah, statue. Yeah. So we're gonna just point it. At a wall. I'm also gonna fill my water skin with holy water. Okay, so you point I, it at the wall. Yeah. Cool. And then uh, I'm gonna open the door. You open the doorway, and it after a short hallway, it opens up into another large room. Oh, good, good facing, good facing. Somebody left this in disarray. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, we probably need more shields, don't we? Oh. I mean, I'm hoping there's a shield somewhere in this room. Oh, well, not necessarily. Okay. You open the doorway, and before you is a large scriptorium. The walls are lined with cabinets and bookshelves, and in the center of the room are three large scribes' tables filled with books Ink pen, uh, dried out ink pe- inkwells and various tools of inscription and writing. As you come into the room, you can see that there are the desiccated corpses of two monks sprawled on the ground and what looks like splayed on one of the desks slumped over is another hooded dead monk. I'm going to approach... Oh. Opposite you, the door opens. Directly across is the other side of the door bearing the script inscriptions of Yvonne Kessels. And another turn point uh, as well, a- another alcove that leads to another, this other alcove with an altar on it that also has an aperture. No shields hanging in the room. There is a lot of debris and mess all over this room. Um, It's possible that searching through it, there might be something of that nature, but in the in the room itself, there are no shields. I have an idea. Yeah. Let's let's say a prayer for our friends. And the just monks. Sprinkle some water on them. Sprinkle some water on them. Say some words that Ophelia Reed taught us. I I go up. Do you guys want to each take one? Yeah. Yeah. There's three monks. Okay. Do you have some holy water? Yeah, I, I'm, I actually, as you, as you ask that, I'm like, yeah, yeah, and I back up and I scoop some <laughs> into my water skin. Of course. All right. I mean, Pluto, you say the words, and I'll just do the sprinkling. What's the, uh, what's the thing that we read in the inscription? The, the light, in in times of darkness, may the light be the truth. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, that sounds nice. That sounds nice. Yeah. And I do a couple. <laughs> um, light. And I'm and I'm. Sprinkling. Which of you are taking which? There's two on the ground and one on the. I'll take one on the ground. Over. I'll take the one slumped over. Okay. 
the, the, the desk. Okay. As you go up to the desk um, and approach the slumped over monk at the desk and begin to open unstopper the, the holy water to pour it, it shudders violently, throwing back its cloak, and it turns to face you. His skin has become gray and desiccated, and his face looks like somebody took their fingers, put them in his mouth and his hands, and pulled his face open like putty, and his jaw hangs down, and his eyes are pulled down like almost like clay into this long, horrific visage. And as he comes towards you, you see beneath his hand, um, as he rears up his hand, you can see that a piece of delirium has been embedded in his the flesh of his hand. And he turns and he screams out. Roll for initiative. No! Man. 23. Eight. <laughs> uh, I got a 20. Okay, guys. <laughs> I My in. back is turned, and I think it's you screaming. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Yeah, what's, okay. what's going on? I'm not turning around. What's happening? He turns up, and he screams out, and as you see this horrific visage, Veo, it is your first turn to act, and as you look upon his face... Um, first of all, uh, um, you can feel an aura of death emanate from him, mm. um, as if he, whatever is be, he has become, is the rejection of all light. And you need to make a Constitution saving throw. Six. Six. Okay, Ouch. you are reduced to zero hit points. What? As it screams out, your heart stops, and Veo almost uh, shooks of white appear in Veo as she drops to zero hit points. Whoop! Help me! <laughs> what just happened? What? Help! <laughs> Ludo. I. I scream at it, too. Okay. I as don't. you scream back at it as it screams at you, make a constitution saving throw. Don't fail it. <laughs> uh, I get an 18. You succeed. Um, and you gird yourself against it as it screams out at you. Is it a what spell? Will you do? This is not a spell. Um, I'm going to... The thing I've learned about screaming is if it's decapitated... It has trouble screaming. Um, I get a 14 to hit. hit. That is a hit. For 12 damage. Okay. It, by, it, uh, which weapon are you wielding? Um, my sword still. Okay. The sword crashes into it and doesn't quite find purchase in its skin. Oh, this isn't good. Uh, I drop the sword and I pull out my spear and I get an, uh, 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 I use precision for 18 to hit. That is a hit. For uh, nine damage Okay. the spear. And did that do something? It did. Okay. It jams through its flesh and this black fluid leaks out of its corrupted body. Ooh. I'm going to action surge. I'm going to use a bonus action to shove it on the ground, getting a 21. It falls to the ground. I run over it and I run to Veo. Okay. Um, I'm going to just grab her and uh, I'm going to dimension door into the other room with my baboon. Yeah. Oh, going, taking Veo out of the room. Yeah. Bail. Bail, bail, bail. Okay. Okay. 
So I just am standing there with my back turned to whatever's <laughs> happening, and over my, like, on one side, I look over and just see Veo drop, and then see you, I hear screaming, and see you run over, grab Veo, and disappear. <laughs> And I'm just standing alone in this room, and I haven't turned around to look at whatever's screaming behind me yet. It's on the ground now. It's fine. <laughs> Alrighty. Sebast- uh, next up is the monk. It pulls back the hood, and you can see it's... Oh, God, oh, God, oh, it's God. The, this face where all the hair has fallen out of it. The okay. This faceless creature, whatever he has become, is an abomination. And a wave of necrotic power... Um, washes out and emanates from it and as it does so it its withering gaze <laughs> rips into you Sebastian and make a constitution saving throw you got this you got this you got, got this. this 14 you succeed uh. you take half damage from its withering gaze which is 6 Psychic, which uh, ends up being a total of uh, nine psychic damage. Or, sorry, necrotic damage. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, necrosis. It is your turn, Sebastian. If you wish, now that you are aware of what's going on, you may avert your gaze to avoid looking upon its face. Otherwise, you must make a constitution saving throw. Do reflections count? I wouldn't know that. If I pull out, I pull out my mirror. You need to decide before you. You need to decide before you pull the mirror out. Whether, if you're going to look at it or not. Yeah. Uh, but is me pulling the mirror out looking at it or not? Because I could say no, I don't want to look at it, and then pull the mirror out. Or does that count as looking at it? There's only one way to find out. Okay, then I'm going to try it. I pull my mirror out and I look at the reflection of the mirror. Yeah. Okay. The power. As you as you pull uh, pull the mirror out, its power is crushing as you are in its aura, and I'm gonna let you make your saving throw with advantage. Ooh. We got a sixteen. You could succeed your saving throw. While you look at it in the in the mirror, you see it. You can you can still see it, so you can still target it uh, as as normal. Uh, but I'm still going to give you disadvantage on attack rolls against it because you're like trying to f- do like yeah yeah. I'm so I'm I'm looking in a mirror and I pull out my wand and I point behind me and I'm like aiming it in the mirror and I'm just going to be like, all right, and let's do this and I scorching ray behind yeah. me. Yeah, nice. That's right. nice. Scorching ray number one. Ugh. Eleven. Sales passed. I readjust. I'm like, nope. Okay, that was a warning shot. And <laughs> number two, crit. Woo! Nice. Yes, all those dice. Now I hate to be the that guy, but aren't you rolling with disadvantage? I am rolling with disadvantage. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's You're right. So you, what did you get then, anyways? Uh, that's it. Tw- uh, 20. It hits. It still nice. hits, but it's not a crit. I, Sorry, other dice. <laughs> Sorry, other dice. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I'm okay. forgetful and was so excited by the 20 that I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> God. Okay, great. Cool. Three damage. It seems like it's resistant to fire, so it's one damage. Cool. I I realize this, and I'm like, well, it's still got one beam left. Uh, Make it good. And I start moving towards the door. <laughs> smart, smart. And I'm going to fire my last beam okay. with uh, disadvantage. Getting a 10. It is a miss. And then I run out of the room. <laughs> Come, okay. ah, come, reach. Go to the top of the round with Veo, who's got to make a death saving throw. Uh, thirteen. Do I add anything to it or no? Uh, not unless you have something to add. Nope. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah, that's a success. Boom. You don't oh. die. Boom. Pluto, you're up. Um, I'm gonna feed Veo a health potion. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, one of the uh greater kind. Okay. Um. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to command the baboon to turn the mirror into the room. 
the light will ah, reveal okay. the truth. Okay. Uh, make a strength check for the baboon. The baboon is so strong. He's as strong as both of you guys. And he gets a two. <laughs> <laughs> he pushes it, he gets, but it, it it doesn't move enough to go into the room. You know, so he gets a one. That's a fun <laughs> He tries pushing really hard, but he's not strong enough to push the pedestal. <laughs> Get him, baboon! Oh, damn yeah. it. And that's my turn. Cool. Um, well, actually, um, after I feed Veo the thing, I do that thing. Can I kind of push her out of the way with me, like, carry us? Like, I want to be out of the way of the doorway. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Let's roll your... <laughs> this this creature... <laughs> the sunlight emanates from the shield regardless and, and lights uh, extends light, of, filling the entire circular room, and it it howls towards the light, but it will not advance closer towards the light. Since all of you are out of its direct sight and in, in, in the area of the sunlight, you just hear it scre- screeching in the room beyond um, as it... Uh, at the at the brilliant light ahead, Sebastian, I say screw it, and I jump into the holy water, and I help the baboon pull it so that Kay. the shield faces into. Make a strength check. This is what I'm best at. And this is your this is your bread and butter. A twelve. Do you want to push it? Uh, all the way to the so that it lines up with the camera, or do you just want to push it so that it shines into the room? I want it so that it, it's like beaming that way. Yes, but I'm do asking you, do you want it to, to or like just oh, the room? Because the the door opposite has the 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 um, has an aperture in it. I just want to shine it into the room. Okay, so you shine the beam of light in the room, and actually with the angle, I think the beam hits yeah. the creature directly. <laughs> So, like a brilliant sunbeam striking it, um, I'm going to have you make an attack roll with your magic ability modifier. 19. That is a hit. Roll 6d8 radiant damage. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> Do you need d8s? One. Uh, yeah. Two, three. I have four. There you I, go. I have one. How many? Six? Um, or eight? 68. 68? Yeah. Yeah. All right. There you go. (laughs) This makes up for the crit that I took away. 32 damage. Yeah. It is reduced to dust by brilliant light. Oh. I'm never blessing anything again. <laughs> <laughs> that really turns you off religion, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in nothing. <laughs> Follow uh, the food, not the light. Yeah. I just listen to my tummy and nothing else. <laughs> Pluto, okay. thanks for coming back for me. Oh, I didn't. I know. <laughs> you you left me completely alone in there with that thing. Well, I had to say Veo. Hey, hey, it's okay. I handled it. I'm you gonna, had it. You had it under I'm control. Gonna take, I handled um, it. So one of hard. the ointments is 18, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take one of these ointments. Yeah. <sighs> I didn't. I didn't want to bail, but um. No, you save Veo. I'm like in seriousness. I, I appreciate you. you. And and you follow you and you and the baboon killed everything. I mean. I hold up my hand to high five the baboon. He for sure high fives you. Yes. He's excited. His name is Chimpanzee. <laughs> oh yeah, his name is Chimpanzee and now he hugs your leg. <laughs> now he's holding onto your leg. Pluto, can you uh oh. Nope. That's his choice. Get he's it? a sentient <laughs> creature. Get. Get off. <laughs> he decides what he likes. <laughs> right. He likes what he likes. Um I stumble towards the statue and try to push it. I'm like, can we just open this other door? <laughs> so I'm ready to get out of this church. <laughs> I'm going to cautiously enter the room again because there's there's a chance that there's something yeah. else in here. So looking at the room, the door on the opposite side is definitely the door that leads into the the Von Kessel's room. It has, it has the, the circular camera on it 
and with the the angle of the light, it would go right into there and go straight through into the next room. You said there's another aperture this there way. There is, yes. Uh, but we don't have any more reflectors. I, I start, like, moving things on the... Like, I walk back into the room mm -hmm. cautiously, and I start, like, moving things on the tables. I'm looking for, like, some sort of large reflective surface of some yeah. sort. Make an investigation check. Yeah, I start flipping tables and stuff, and... I'm still trying to push this statue. <laughs> I'm not very strengthy, though. I got a 10. You go to one of the bodies of the monks, and there is a ring of keys on his belt. I very hesitantly, because it's another dead body in this room, and I'm really scared. I, I like, throw holy water on it as you reach for the keys. And I'm like, light be with you, light be with you, light be with you. <laughs> so so <laughs> much light. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Listen for screaming. You take them. Yeah. It didn't move. Okay. All well, right. The only other thing that you can see in this room, uh, looking around, there are po stacks of archive books and many cabinets. There are, are two sets of cabinets, both of which bear on the outside, bear the seals of the Von Kessels and the, the, the heraldry of Drakenheim. And in a pile of, um, amongst all the scrap, is a very strange object. There is a large metallic sphere on the ground. It is about one foot in diameter and it is made out of what looks like filigreed mithril. And it itself has, extending off of it, these two long spindly arms. And on one side of the sphere, is a large telescope like lens like a eyeball on the center on on this ball uh and on the bottom of it there is this long slot from which a sheet of shiny paper is trailing out does it have any resemblance to the machines in the clock tower. The Modrons? The Modrons. It is definitely some kind of machine, but, it, but the construction of it and the fillery on it are almost celestial in nature. And in fact, it has engravings of, celesti of celestial tones on it. I read them. Um, what do I remember from my the, the glory days? Caspian. Make uh, make your uh, do you have a knowledge in the planes or religion? Uh, I have oh boy. No, my I don't have any. I don't have a pers okay. like any like training in religion. But you speak celestial. Yeah, I know celestial. So you learned the language, but you didn't study their history. <laughs> Classic, uh, just just ignorant to their culture. Just mm -hmm. really just wanted some passing words. Yeah. Like, I wanted to say hi, bye, you know? Just Thank you. to, like, chat with angels, but not care about... Yeah. It's, um, it's sprawled out on the ground, um, in, in, the, with a, actually, a rather thick layer of dust on it. Pick the poor can thing we, up. Can we put it in the bag of holding? <laughs> um, I go up and I, like, kind of push it and just step back. As you push it, it shakes, and it begins to whir, and then it sounds like there's a chiming coming from inside of it. Um, Uh-oh. And it suddenly shakes and shudders, and begins to float in the air. <laughs> and I come into the room being like, what so, are you doing? The telescoping eye begins to retract and contract and it very suddenly starts to fly and it turns and faces at each of you and it says in celestial but you two understand it oh oh hello and as it speaks its voice is almost like singing oh hi my hi. name's Sebastian Crow who are you I go into the room. It says... <laughs> I 
I am Lucant. What is your purpose here? I have lived here for a very long time, but I have been sleeping for years. Things have changed here, I can see. Uh, We've been hired to uh, do some renovations. We're going to bring this place back up to... Health code. Health code standards, yeah. Yep. Can you help? I don't know. I have been sent here to serve the Flame Keepers and assist them with keeping their records. Do you know anything about uh, that aperture and I point towards the small alcove? Mm. Yes. Yeah. That is where the monks keep a great weapon called Flame Tongue. What, what is it? It is a great blade that they stored here. Oh. Pluto, you like blades. I love blades. How do we open it? You must guide the light towards it. Oh. Uh, that is all I know. Do you know where they keep other reflective devices around here? Is there one here in this room? No, there is not. But if you need reflectors, there are many shields with... I believe that there is another set of shields kept under the guard of some of the old flame keepers and priests. (sighs) Means we're going to have to go south in the the east. Can I ask... uh, what was the last record you remember keeping? I take a very special kind of record. I am not allowed to remember very far for to do for I give of my memories when I record them. But I can show you what I can do if you would like. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And I just give like a thumbs up? Certainly. Would the three of you stand together for a moment? Uh... Dragon hug. (laughs) (laughs) The creature floats up and floats a few feet away and its glass-like eye begins to zoom in and out. And as it does so, its two, two arms um, spread out and beams of light emit from its hands over the page of paper coming out of it. And it creates the most realistic painting you have ever seen. It is this glossy, realistic image that almost looks like you were... It was like It almost looks real. It doesn't look like it's paint. It looks like it's literally been painted with pure light. And it tears it off, and it hands it to you. Fan art. I, I, <laughs> I look terrified. Can we do this again? Yeah. Can we? Can we do one more? Is it of us? Yeah. It's it's a it's a. It's the three of us looking horrified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like hugging together. Can we do yeah. one more? Yes. Certainly. <laughs> <clears throat> And it does one more, and it, the light shines from its hands on the page. It rips it off, and it hands it to you. Oh, much better. That's so much nice. Better. Yeah. So nice. nice. Oh. Wow, thank you. Guys, we can hang this up in our clock tower. Oh, my gosh. Looking at its trail of, like, paper, are there other images? Yes, I have been making images for some time here. I don't remember them. I make them, and I can't remember them anymore. Um... <sighs> Do you, do you remember names? The keys. Nothing. The keys to the cupboard. The um, keys might open the cupboards to the... It has been at least 15 years since I have made an image like this. Where was the last image you made? I don't remember. 
Um, those cupboards that you had mentioned, are they locked? They... they are. I start trying keys yeah. in the cupboard. And you open one of the cupboards up, and it is filled with... filled with more of these images. I start to take the images out, and I start going through them furiously. I, I hand a pile to Pluto. Yeah, yeah. I shove one towards him. I hand you a stack, and we all start We're going through. We're looking for uh, heirs to the Drakenheim. They are... It looks like they are images of... There, there's one image that you come to, and it was taken um, at the great... Um, city courts, and it there's a there's a picture that has the king, the steward, the lord commander, the high flame keeper. It's an image of all of the 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 ruling council of Drakenheim. Is that all your dad? Is that your dad? I just take it and I just start like <laughs> you hear purr in my throat, oh. just like the most satisfied, yeah. and I just like they all look very stoic. It looks very very official. Yeah. Um, and the um, the image is, is all of them kind of all with like their arms crossed and they all look like very serious men and women all, all pose like a, a very very formally um, and um, as you uh, go through a few there's most of these are very official looking images um, and as the Archon speaks I can only make these images a few times each day. So there are not many of them. Uh, do they have dates on them? Um, yeah. They, someone has written on the back of them, the dates. What does this one say of my dad? Um, this one uh, was taken about 20 years ago. I start looking at the dates, specifically trying to find any image that was taken yeah. in the months before they're arranged chronologically um and it seems like the council would take an image like this every year so there's images of the count the king's council that are in that are here e each year there's images of the of the clergy the guild masters would all get together of all the various guilds of Drakenheim, and there's like one giant image of of them all taken in the in the cathedral all the images have been taken in the cathedral itself do I, I find am, any oh sorry go ahead I was gonna say I like take my sleeve and I rub my eye and I'm like I'm not crying you're crying this is my dad <laughs> guys it's my dad I'm not crying mm -hmm. uh, neither am I okay there's another <laughs> folder um that seems to contain um other images in it of the royal family um that are less formal in nature and there are photos of tabloids the, the royal family when at the birth of each of the children Aww. um and uh going through some of these photos like many of them are framed in wood and kept all all in here and preserve and preserved and going through them there is um there is a photo of the steward um, holding a very small veil uh, and the, 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 there's this the steward and uh, he's standing with um, another man and little veil together in this photo guys look it's me it's my family oh my gosh this is this is amazing what's <sighs> the, like these these could give us so much information like who do you know that other man yeah he was he was always with my dad he's together with my dad his name was Eric he might maybe if we can find Eric we can find your dad he gives us something else to work on yeah I don't know where he was the day of the, the meteor crash. I was with my dad and we got separated, but I don't know where Eric was. Do you remember what he did? Like, was he a steward as well, or was he a... 
a guard or a... I know he was he was always a- around with us. He was part of my family. It was Johan and Eric, my my family. And I don't know. I I, I must have. Oh my gosh! I for- I forgot about him. I have to find him too. I have to find Eric. But could he be with my dad? I don't know. And I. I stare at the photograph. Hmm. I think uh, I want to keep looking for maybe Sebastian's mom. I'm also looking for the last photo ever taken and how close to the meteor crash that was. Hmm. I like that you're looking. There, up. yeah. <laughs> I uh, thought that's what you were going to ask some about. Some of the photos that are 100 years old, uh, they, they go back about 150 years, and there are several photos in them. The council that have Lenneth even died in them. Did he find one? Found your mom. When's the date? Because if we can find the last one that she was in the council. Yeah, because she used could to be, be a member of the council. And that could tell us maybe more about why she quit, mm. what she's running from. Maybe there's other people in the photo. They the last a image. A thousand words. The last... Um, the last images of Lenneth in, in there go back about 100 years ago. About 102 years ago. 102 years ago. That tells us something. Let's keep that photo, the last photo that I folded she was in. And put it in my pocket. Because like anybody in yeah. that photo, too, could be important. Yeah. Um, Incidentally, all the people in those photos are all bearing their various seals. <laughs> But is she the only elf amongst the council? Yeah. So everybody else is Human. probably yeah. probably dead. But it could also tell us, if they're all wearing seals, we can know what the seals look like, too. True. Mm-hmm. What's the last photo? Um, the council photos continue right up until... It seems like they did this every summer. Okay. They, they took these photos. Um, and they go, go right up, right up to... Um, and there's photos basically of all, and, and they're very archival in nature. They're, there's only a handful of images that are kind of not formal like this, but the um, the last image being one of the council itself, um, and that's all there is. I think we should also take some candid photos of the uh, heirs of Drakenheim. Yeah. Because we don't, we were carrying around like a painting we found. Mm. This would be more accurate for sure. Yeah, so, but isn't it when they were born or there's yeah, later it's photos? Bir- it's only birth photos. There's uh, no um, later. of them as no. young kids. Or, okay. I start to gather all the photos that I can see of my dad and I just start to like put them in my bag. <laughs> I'm looking for any... Is there any other archival documents? Um, like, there's. A, did you say there's two cabinets? There, there are several cabinets. There's lots of documents here that basically talk about records of the city and records of the flame keepers. Um, there are one of the cabinets has a bunch of marriage certificates for various noble families in them. Um, others have deeds and titles. But aside from the photos of the royal family that are here, there's nothing pertaining to the royal family specifically. Most of this, uh, most of the other information here is about other families in the city. Yep, several other noble families have their images taken here. But no, like royal family, no. Marriage certificates, no. I think next thing on our list down here is to find two more shields. Because if we're going to get into the Von Kessel's chamber, we need two shields to reflect the light. So... Well, we need a shield to get into this room. This room. room. This, this guy can reflect the light in, right through that aperture. Then but then in the door. next room, we need to deflect it again. And yeah. we also need one on the other side. Exactly. So, two. so we need at least two. You're absolutely right. Well, we've right. got one on the other side. Oh, no, oh, that no one we use it there. That one is now in this guy's hand. True. So we need two more shields in order to get that door open. I bet you're in, they're on the scary other side. 
yeah, so I think it's uh, like we said before, we said south and then we went north and then we went back around here. Yeah. It's time to go to the other side. And south. And go south because we need to hunt for some more shields. South to the mouth. <laughs> south to the mouth. Of danger. On the other side. And then we can get you a new sword. Ooh, that might be nice. Called Flame Tongue. Question, should it we leave will. the machine, the light machine here? Uh, I think we should take... Oh, can he come? Yeah. Can you, you, you're, you can leave the room. You, do you want to come with us? I am bound to the cathedral. Aww. That's fine. Do you want to come upstairs with us? Sure. There's going to be some new archival footage as we uh, consecrate this land. I, I only do stills, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I have to sweeten the pot to get you to do like a video <laughs> archive? Or uh, you throw you a couple bucks? No, there, there's a huge technological leap forward required to make a... F- a f- it, <laughs> it's, it's a massive difference between photography and video. You can and, do like a stop film. motion. Can we do like a stop... You know what? We'll Are you going to later. invent <laughs> a film right now? Is that what's happening? Is Pluto Jackson? It, 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 a whole it, it, new it, industry. You, you know, you're gonna have to come up with a Maltese cross. You're gonna there's so many mechanical things that need to be done in order to capture film. Yeah, I know. And um, I've got so many other things on my list. Like, add it to the list. <laughs> okay. Invent film. Invent <laughs> moving pictures. Add it to the list. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> Robot uh, painter man. What was your name? name? Lucant. 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 Um, I'd like to introduce you to... The Bag of Holding. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, the Bag of Holding, and I open it up. Um, no. We're going to make you into okay, a surprise. No, no, then he, just come he, upstairs, he, and we'll, I'm, I'm going to introduce you to Ophelia. She is a flame keeper. Um, bringing Lucant upstairs, um, Ophelia is shocked. And she says... Um, this being is a celestial. He, it is an angel known as a camera archon. Wow. That's so cool. Weird name. I like it. Uh, we used all the pictures today on us. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. so sorry. <laughs> and we found they some are, amazing photos. They're just remarkable beings. We, uh, a few of them ha- are summoned and they teach us, they paint through light. They call what they do photography. I love it. The images that they create are very sacred. It's pretty awesome. They made this beautiful painting of the three of us. From Not that one, this, that's the yeah, scary the, the, the good one, the good one. Here's the good one. <laughs> the... They are mysterious beings, and they they say very little. But there are many orders of of our sages and acolytes that have studied them for generations, trying to learn the secrets of what they do. It is miraculous the way that they can put these images on, on a page. What's more miraculous is that nobody mentioned to us how elaborate the pathways down there were. Turns out you need to guide light through the hallways, and I guess and you, you can't bring you, your you're own. You're not light. from here, so yeah. you didn't know that. Are all cathedrals built like this? It depends on many of many cathedrals, all throughout. We are custodians of sacred knowledge, and oftentimes. Particularly in Westamar, I know that the folk here worked very closely with the king to guard and guide secrets. Of course, if there's defenses down here, they are here to protect it in the event that the place would fall and to stop a thief, usually, from getting in. They're not really... If they're giving you a hard time, I'm very sorry. It's nothing. It's fine. Part of the reason why both Illyria and Westamar let our cathedrals use, guard these things is because, well, 
the only other group of people with the, the means to use magic to protect secrets are the Amethyst Academy and, well, there's a lot of good reasons not to give the Amethyst Academy state secrets. True. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Well, I'd like to say that we found everything that we were looking for, but we're we're not we're not quite there yet. There's a few doors blocking our path. We're We found so much more though. We're gonna we're gonna be down there for a little bit longer. Well, we will have to see what happens next week. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we found pictures of my dad. Oh, oh look at that. Plural. Dad's true. Yeah. Yeah. My dad's. <laughs> We never, you never mentioned Eric. Yeah. He, well, he and my he dad. was less around towards the end. Yeah, he wasn't quite there. You? you know, when the meteor fell, but he was still around Drakenheim, and I guess I should have been more thoughtful about looking for well, him. Well, it but... seems like it kind of, like, the photo kind of sparked. Like, you know when you have those things where you're like, oh, I totally, like, you, you, you brought, like, back some memories and. Yeah. Oh. That's good. This is good. I can bring my whole family back together. Oh. You're assuming based on an old photo that Eric is also alive. Why not? You are it, so hopeful. You are <laughs> so hopeful. I mean, you you are a baby in that photo. That's true. Yeah, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Anything could have happened. <laughs> so, yeah. We shall see. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> good, good times. Good times. Yeah, that's where we're going to wrap things up for uh, tonight. Uh, a big thank you to our cast, as always, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, uh, for uh, planning our, our, our game this evening. Also, a huge thank you to Kyle for working behind the scenes to manage our stream. Give them what they want, Kyle. Yes. So handsome. Oh, he just knocked over everything <laughs> to give you this thumbs up. There you go. <laughs> Um, and also a uh, special thank you to Clayton, our producer, for keeping us all organized behind the scenes. Oh, and always uh, great music uh, supported by Tabletop Audio. Uh, check it out at tabletopaudio.com. It's all free. Uh, we use it on all of our streams, and it's a great way to uh, enhance your own game at home. So check it out. And check out our merch on Teespring. Follow the links below uh, or bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch uh, to take a look at some of our uh, t-shirts that are posted. If you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, please consider checking out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And by joining our Patreon, you get access to our phenomenal Discord channel that ha just has such a cool group of people in it. We get to chat with them all day, every day, and it's just so much fun to talk about D&D. There's even a private chat where you can talk to Monty about stuff that happens behind the scenes in Drakenheim. You can make wild theories, and he might tell you if you're right or not. Call me out on my DMing mistakes. And <laughs> yeah, I'll also do that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, join join the Discord if you join our Patreon. It's fun stuff. As always, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. You'll also find prior episodes from this campaign available for your viewing pleasure there, too. And be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign on Twitch. Check us out at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And you can watch all the previous episodes on YouTube. We will be uh, back up here next week as usual, but I believe the week of the 13th of August, uh, I will be traveling again. So I think, Kelly, are you going to do something special again? As long as everybody is available, uh, we I'm going to be running a chapter two to my Monster of the Week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to see what that looks like. Bring but. back Truman. Steve Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Miami Ashcroft. And, Steve Miami uh, Ashcroft. Mitch's character. Uh, oh, um, uh, oh, come on, come on. Come on. Get it. Dig deep. Yeah, dig deep. I, I, I can't J tell you. Jade. Jade. 
<laughs> Mitch. We're gonna bring back Mitch. We'll bring back Mitch. <laughs> Mitch. So so that'll be the week of the of uh that'll be the week of August thirteenth. I will be traveling that week, but we will still have a stream that week. It will be once again Kelly running Monster of the Week here, and then we'll be right back on with uh Drakenheim, More uh, Drakenheim. through the, the end of the summer. As well, if any of you that are watching uh are uh coming to Fan Expo in Toronto uh at the end of August, we will be there. Um, just chilling out, playing some games, checking some stuff out. It's, it's not a very fun. big role playing game con, uh, but we are going to be there. We're not going to make it to Gen Con this year or anything, but uh, we're we're looking at other conventions going forward. So if you are going to be at uh, at Fan Expo this year, uh, please let us know. Uh, uh, drop us a line because you'll probably see them wandering around in some pretty awesome cosplay. I was going to say you're going to literally see yeah. Veo, Sebastian, and Pluto there. Yeah, not yeah. just Jill, Kelly, and Joe. It's so. going to be crazy. Ooh. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. Mm -hmm.